Morning, everyone. Six minutes after the hour of 6 a.m. It's Wednesday, July 24th, 2019. 62 degrees outside. We're looking for a high of around 87, 88, somewhere in there this morning. Uh, or, well, today, sometime today, I guess. And uh, Shaman Tobin on the line with me from uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. Tommy Galop, your morning mayor in the house. And uh, this is the uh, KMMS Morning Soapbox with uh, Tom and Shane. So, so Shane, how you doing? Oh, I'm so excited. So excited. I don't know what's more exci- exciting, what's going on in space or what's going on in Washington, D.C. Well, <laughs> I guess we'll cover both. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> So there you go. The Indians are on the way to the moon. There you go. That's all that's everyone it. needs to know. That's right. India is making uh, making their way uh, upward. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, today's weather, uh, sunny, sunny. We're looking for a high of 87. No chance of rain at all. No chance of hail. No chance of snow. No chance of anything except sun today. So pretty nice. Uh, be mostly clear tonight with a low around 51, and uh, that should be pretty nice, too. No rain in the forecast at all. Tuesday, we're looking at 83 and uh, sunny, also zero chance of precip. 84 on Friday, uh, the day of our big event. And if you're not aware of our big event, Shane and I are going to be live in person at the Grand Tree at 6 p.m. On uh, the Friday the 26th, so uh, we hope that you will join us. It's a free event. Come on down to the Grand Tree. We'll be in the highlight room on the back side of the convention center. And uh, we'd like for you to RSVP us uh, at our website at kmmsam.com. Look on the What's Hot bar for an evening with Tom and Shane. Click on that, and uh, it'll record the uh, number of people coming and who you are and all of that. And uh, that's all we need, so we have adequate seating for everyone. And uh, so anyway, 84 on Friday, uh, might be a little touch of rain uh, later in the evening on Friday, but uh, Saturday looks pretty good also, 83 degrees on Saturday, 79 on Sunday, and sunny, perfect weather, Shane, for this week, so we're pretty excited about that. Uh, temperatures around the area, Livingston is 66 degrees, Manhattan is 61, Three Forks 62, uh, Galton Gateway is 62, and Ennis is 60 right now, Big Sky is at 58, and at the airport in Belgrade right now, it's 62 degrees, and we are at 62 degrees right here in our downtown studios, so that gives you a really close idea of the weather for today and the week ahead there you go yeah yeah well on this date in 1783 revolutionary simon bolivar was born in caracas venezuela yeah what a guy simone jose antonio de la santisma trinidad bolivar palacios ponte y blanco now if that's not a mouthful <laughs> I, I i don't think i want to stand in a receiving line to have be introduced to this guy i was gonna say i don't think you want to see his driver's license continued on the other side <laughs> amazing story you know as you said 24th of july 1783 was born died 17th of december 1830 47 when he died young yeah. guy mm-hmm. uh, born into the wealthy class of of uh, of the spanish in in uh, in in Mexico, well, what is now uh, Venezuela, but what's it, what's incredible is is that he went to Europe uh, at sixteen, was educated in France and and uh, Spain at the time, and then came back. And uh, the Creole family he was in, he decided to rise up against the uh, the Spanish. Now, the most important thing about the guy was he freed and created Venezuela, Bolivia, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, the Bahama. All from the Spanish Empire, so you know the Spanish and the Mexicans—they—they've they, they, had it pretty tough. They lost the South to Simon Bolivar, you know, uh, most of South America, and then or their holdings there. And then in the North, of course, they lost, you know, 55 percent of Mexico to the U.S. after the Spanish-American War that was fought 20 years later. So the 1800s were a very mi- mixed uh, century of uh, wars that had huge changes, in, you know, on a political basis and. This was the guy that changed and uh, basically created South America. Wow. Yeah, some guy. 
1847, yeah. Mormon leader uh, Brigham Young and his followers arrived in the valley of the Great Salt Lake in present-day Utah. Yeah, what an amazing story. The only the only uh, church, modern church or any church, that has an exact record of every member of the church. And uh, I, I always find that to be so interesting. But mm-hmm. anyway, we all know the story of religious leader, settler, uh, the, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, um, now known as the Mormons. Uh, he founded Salt Lake City and uh, served as the first governor, uh, territorial governor of uh, the Utah Territory, um, precursor to the University of Utah and Brigham Young University. Mm-hmm. So uh, just a remarkable guy that uh, was very strong about his, per, you know, pursuing the... Uh, uh, the issue of, of this new religion, um, and uh, lived to be 76 years old, 1877. Wow. Hmm. And uh, weren't they kicked out of about three or four places while they ended up in yeah. Salt Lake? They were That's they it. were kicked out of, I don't know, Ohio or Illinois or somewhere. Right. I forget uh, where. But. Yeah, and, uh, and, and a lot of people were assassinated in, in the church. He himself was almost assassinated. But yeah, Ohio was the big the big win. Uh, they went to the Ohio Valley from New England, and that's where they built their first temple. And uh, the, the reason they have that turret on the temple is the head of the church walks to the top of the temple and says, uh, Salt Lake City and sits down and talks to God. Right, so, yeah. All right, well. They're believers. They're big time believers. I guess so. 1862, Martin Van Buren, the eighth president of the United States, died in Kinderhook, New York, at the age of 79. Yeah, pretty amazing. You know, it, it, when a lot you, of these you, guys uh, lasted uh, quite a long time. The fathers and the early uh, early leaders, uh, they were all in their 70s and 80s. Everybody else is dying at 30, and these guys are— I know. Is it because they ate well or what? <laughs> I I, it had to be, you know, the lack of disease because uh, that's basically what took everybody early. Is the, so you know, they didn't they put, didn't hang around with the disease people, huh? <laughs> well, but, and they and they they had wine cellars again. Remember, water with potable water was a real issue still. You well, know, I guess that's ate. true. Yeah. So, okay. Now, yeah, whatever. 1866, Tennessee became the first state to be readmitted to the Union after the Civil War. Which is really remarkable because, you know, ten, it's uh, 6,000 or six and a half million people today. It's sort of like it's, a, it's one of those middle states, you know, along mm-hmm. the uh, Mason-Dixie line, right? Right. Kentucky, Tennessee, mm-hmm. and, and Ohio, Virginia, uh, West Virginia. So, yeah, today it's, uh, you know, ranked 16th in population, 6.7 million. And, uh, you know, it's a pretty diverse, kind of, a pretty diverse state, but mm-hmm. uh, part of the, you know, part of the Ohio Valley and, and, and those, those uh, mountains down there. It's a beautiful yeah. place. I mean, didn't it's, they want to re- split it in half at one time? Yeah, they did. Yeah. yeah. Half of it was called Frank and Ernie or something like that. I forget <laughs> what, what it was called. So. Yeah, that's right. There, there, there was a big. What it was, was a Frank, like, Franklin something? What Franklin something or other? I can't remember. Yeah, I'm trying to look it up here <laughs> while we're talking, but I don't see it. Yeah, but I, I remember in the, the they specifically uh, there was a, a period of disenfranchisement, and uh, disenfranchisement laws led to uh, the, the, or the state wanting to break up over it. Of course, one side was more construct was more conservative than the other. In the, in the 1880s. So, yeah, it was pretty amazing after the Civil War. But uh, it never seceded. I mean, it seceded from the Union only because it was sort of a new southern state. It was one of those new southern states. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I can't remember what the, uh, they were going to call it some weird, some weird off the wall name that had nothing to do with the state name or anything. But I don't know. No. It was, I don't know. Anyway, it's not important, I guess. <laughs> Not that important, yeah, anyway. 1937, state of Alabama dropped charges against five black men accused of raping two white women in the Scottsboro case. Yeah, it's one of those tough cases it's hard to talk about. Like, what, what mm-hmm. do you say about it? You know, they, they wrongly accused them, and then, but uh, they spent time in jail, and it's yeah. just a misgovernment, misgovernance. Mm-hmm. That's what it was. Yeah. 1959, during a visit to the Soviet Union, Vice President Richard M. Nixon and Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev uh, 
compared the merits of capitalism and communism in the kitchen debate, a so named because it took place at a model kitchen at a U.S. Ex- exposition. So, well, that, yeah. Good. The it, kitchen and, debate. And, and, the kitchen <laughs> debate. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things that has uh, impact. Because it was a, it was on television, you know. Mm-hmm. So his trip, his trip to the Soviet Union, after the disastrous trip he had to South America. Mm-hmm. I mean, almost, you know, he almost got, you know, stoned to death in South America. But yeah, um, you know, he went to to uh, Russia and met with Khrushchev. And to to think about it, could have been him and Khrushchev during the missile crisis instead of Kennedy is sort of, mm-hmm. uh, well, that's a hard thing to think about. Yeah. But anyway. That, that yeah. would have been interesting to see how, how those two got along. Exactly. <laughs> All right, we got to take a quick break here. We got to take care of the ranchers, farmers, and all of those folks. So here's your Montana News and Agriculture. 22 minutes after the hour of 6 a.m., it is Wednesday, uh, July 24, 2019. Uh, 62 degrees outside. We're looking for high in the mid to upper 80s. And uh, Shane Matabin on the line with me, half man, half amazing. Shane will be here. Uh, Monday, uh, or rather uh, Friday morning at uh, 6 a.m. with me live in studio. And then at 6 o'clock in the evening, we will be at the Grand Tree live and in person for an event uh, for listeners out there. So uh, if you want to come on out to the uh, Grand Tree uh, at the Highlight Room, that's on the back side of the Grand Tree in their convention center area. So we'll be there uh, live at 6 o'clock. So uh, we uh, would like to invite you to RSVP so we'll know how many seats to have. And we're filling up fast, Shane. We're uh, into the 40s now, I think, uh, finally. So uh, no, that's great. a lot of folks are coming. So uh, we hope we want to make sure everybody's got a seat and they aren't standing along the wall or sitting on the floor. And uh, so RSVP us at uh, KMMSAM.com or on your smartphone at AM1450 KMMS. And uh, just look for the What's Hot Bar and you'll see um, an evening with Tom and Shane. Click on that, and it'll just ask your name and how many people you're bringing, and that way we can get an accurate count. And uh, if you ha- don't have computer access, you can certainly call us, 522-TALK, 522-8255. We'll be happy to take your uh, RSVP over the phone, or uh, you can email us at tom at kmmsam.com. Uh, there's a million ways to do it, <laughs> so <laughs> any, any way you want to contact us, uh, we'll be happy to do it. You can do it on our text line, 478-8298, on our app chat on AM 1450 KMMS. So by all means, uh, let us know if you're coming and uh, how many you're going to have in your party, and uh, we'll uh, have a good time there. So It should be exciting. It's so, it's so cool because... Like forty RSVPs, probably you know you can figure two two per per two, two per response. So sure. that's like 80, 80 to hundred people. Well, it may you, be. That's yeah. that's exciting. It's great, and everybody gets a chance to meet each other. This is for all you listeners out there that have listened to your voices and others for years, mm-hmm. and now you get a chance to meet that voice. Yeah. So it's it's a meet that voice challenge. There you are. <laughs> the other thing we'd like to do, uh, we would like to uh, invite our sponsors, uh, too. Uh, bring your business cards, pass out your business cards at this event, and uh, let some people know that, uh, you know, you support uh, KMMS and uh, uh, that, uh, who knows, there might be somebody in the audience that needs your services or your business or whatever, so... Uh, we hope that you will also uh, attend and um, be there. So, well, right now, this day in history, 1969, Apollo 11, the first manned mission to the moon, splashed down safely in the Pacific. We got men to the moon, got them back, and uh, all is happy. And then put them into quarantine. Well, yeah, but <laughs> yeah, because. The, well, the whole thing. Remember, I remember that so much as a little kid being so afraid. Oh my God! Yeah. I wonder if they brought something back and we all die. Anyway, they, they that's did true. Yeah, back. they brought forty-seven half pounds of uh, lunar material back that mm-hmm. sat quarantined with them in the same containment container. Well, yeah, uh, leave them in there with the rocks so they can yeah. continue to be <laughs> exposed. That's right. and, and they spent a total of twenty-one hours and thirty-one minutes on the moon. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it was great, launched by the great Saturn V rocket. Boy, when you go mm-hmm. to the Kennedy Space Center, you know, they have a they have a, a museum outside of all the rockets, you know. The, yeah. Up, uh, the Saturn V, the, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the red, red, what was it called? The Red Deer or whatever. And mm-hmm. it, it's just amazing to stand underneath the Saturn V rocket and look up. 
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the inches alone, the five inches across, you know, 50 feet across on the bottom of each. Yeah. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's just huge. Yeah. You're not in uh, Vancouver, are you? Yes, I am. Are yeah, you? I'm in Vancouver. Okay. Are you? Okay. The background looks different. Does it? Yeah. Well, it's, you know, that's because you're seeing my hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason I the reason I ask is that your voice is about uh, two seconds ahead of your uh, of the visual. Oh, is it? Well, mm -hmm. that might be my Skype. Remember, I was having a bit of an issue setting up my computer this yeah, morning. Yeah, you're so on maybe... a you're on a slight delay, so I guess but it's fine. It doesn't, you know, because I I don't I don't want to look at you particularly. So. Uh, you, you really not especially <laughs> this time of day. Not this time yeah. of day. No, I'm still pasty and wrinkled. Not not a good look. No. Yes, you are. 1979 on this date, a uh, Miami judge, uh, uh, or Miami jury rather, convicted Ted Bundy on first degree murder in the slayings of two Florida State University sorority sisters. Yeah, went in there and beat him with a log, I believe, or a piece of wood or something. I don't know. It's pretty, pretty nasty. Uh, whatever this, this was, this was a nasty guy. But I do agree with him. He he made the case that you shouldn't execute me. You should study me. And I would agree with yeah, that. They right. should have studied him. Yeah. And and I think that spending uh, a life in in a prison cell is a far worse punishment than than you know killing someone. I you know you, they get mm -hmm. off to me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'd I'd rather you know anyway that. Whatever. Yeah, they should be in prison, and they should be some uh, some big person's very good friend. <laughs> in a, in a matter of speaking. <laughs> right. Maybe no newest best friend. Yeah. In 1990, Iraq amassed tens of thousands of troops and hundreds of tanks along its border with Kuwait, and they uh, that was a big mistake. Well, it really was, you know, and it's it's again we talk. I mentioned this once before, a case of not having enough. You know what I mean? Like he had this remarkable country called Iraq, who was producing a massive amount of oil. Um, yeah, it, it, it's how it, I guess you just you know at some point you you do go over the top you know mm -hmm. a, a, absolute power corrupts absolutely and that's what happens with the despots and dictators right they just they go over the top can't get enough. Nineteen ninety seven yeah. retired Supreme Court Justice William J Brennan died at the age of ninety one. Yeah, it was a pretty remarkable time of of uh, being in, in the Supreme Court, 1956 to 1990. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a long time. That was a long time. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and so uh, he he made big changes with uh, his decision making. He was he was nominated by Dwight Eisenhower and ended up being a pretty liberal uh, justice. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, he was pretty liberal. So yeah, he sided with Warren on a lot of stuff in the 60s, mm -hmm. you yep. know, and everything. So, yes, you know. he did. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this portion. Uh, we've got uh, Montana State News, got Fox News, got the uh, Britt Foster Weather, we've got Yellowstone County Motors, we've got Walgreens, we've got, uh, well, whatever. <laughs> we'll be right back with more right after this. 24 minutes for the top of the hour. It's Wednesday, July 24, 2019, 61 degrees outside. We're looking for a high in the mid 80s, uh, mid or upper 80s actually today. No chance of rain, snow, hail, or sleet, or <laughs> postmen will be able to make their appointed rounds with no problems. <laughs> what about oversized raindrops? Come on. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, Shane Matabin on the line with me from Vancouver, British Columbia. Tommy Galop, your morning mayor in the house. And uh, oh, no Mike McCormick today. Mike will uh, see us tomorrow at 7. And the uh, God Squad will be here at 8 tomorrow. So, uh, And Shane will be here Friday, Friday morning. Right. In and live tomorrow, and in person in the studio. And tomorrow I'll be en route to... Uh, to uh, visit you. So That's there right. You go. Yeah, you won't be on with me tomorrow, so I'm gonna have to wing it alone. Well, well, right. well uh, with Mike and here. with Mike and the God Squad, I ought to be able to make it through the morning. Okay. Yeah, you, you'll be just fine. I'm I'll sure. be just yeah. fine. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see what's going on in uh, local news. Uh, well, Penelope Pierce, who is the head of the uh, Gallatin Valley Land Trust, or has been, I guess, for the past ten years or so is uh, leaving. Uh, she is going to uh, hang around until they find a replacement for her that uh, she's given a year notice, I guess, and 
Hopefully they can find a replacement with a nationwide search for the Gallatin Valley Land Trust. And those are the folks that uh, preserve open space around the Gallatin Valley. So uh, we uh, maintain our trails and our pristine views without uh, 40-foot, you know, uh, skyscrapers or whatever, 400-foot skyscrapers uh, blocking down the mountains. So so, uh, they, they work hard to do that, so... Yeah. Well, what a view that would be from a 40-story window of, of the valley. Oh, my gosh. Well, yeah, that would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, the, oh. uh, the, the, we got some buildings that are pretty tall out at MSU. Yeah. So uh, they yeah. can uh, they got some pretty good views out there. So oh, that will be yeah. pretty nice. So anyway, uh, we appreciate uh, Penelope's efforts, and uh, good kudos to her for 10 years uh, in her position. And uh uh, I know not everybody agrees with the Gallatin Valley Land Trust, uh, but, uh, you know, <laughs> they're here. So <laughs> kudos to her for uh, keeping everybody sane during her 10-year reign. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see who takes her place and how that, uh, how that plays out. So we wish her the best. And, yeah, maybe uh, it, yeah. It, we might try and get whoever it isn't in and find out how much land they do have in trust. They have 50,000 acres, I believe, something ah. like that. It's a pretty good-sized chunk of uh, real estate, um, I, I believe, uh, somewhere around here. I thought I saw that somewhere, but uh, anyway, they've got uh, they've got quite a few uh, uh, areas around here that uh, are pretty, um, you know, pretty pristine, so they're going to yes. keep them, so... Yeah. Yeah. The organization. Yeah. They've conserved uh, 50,000 acres uh, around uh, Bozeman. So that's a lot. That's 50,000 football fields fans. That's 50,000 football fields. And an acre is about a f- acre is about a football field without the end zones. Pretty much. There you go. Yeah. So, <laughs> so keep that in mind. Yes, exactly. All right. Well, over in Billings, we got a Montana man pleaded guilty uh, Tuesday to a pair of crimes uh, that remained unsolved for two decades. Uh, the, wow. Uh, yeah, he murdered an 18-year-old video store clerk. He was attempting to rob the store, thought maybe she might have recognized him. So, of oh, course, no. of course, you know, why go to why go to jail for five years for a robbery when you could do life for a murder? Yeah. <laughs> That's thinking. <laughs> so. Nice. Yeah, so anyway, he got rid of her. And then uh, later on, um, uh, he uh, was tr- doing another <laughs> another robbery, and uh, uh, he decided, uh, ah, why not? You know, you kill once, uh, why not do it again? So uh, so anyway, he is uh, finally, uh, finally caught, and a plea agreement calls for him to be sentenced to life in prison rather, wow. than, rather than the death penalty, so. So as you talked about, he will be somebody's good friend for <laughs> a number of years because he's only 39, I think. Uh, so uh, kudos to him, and <laughs> well, let's hope he has a wonderful time in prison. Yeah, so. I assume that state, right? That was, so he'll be up by uh, yeah, by uh, he'll be uh, Deer yeah. Lodge or well, I don't yeah. know. It's in Billings, so I, I guess yeah. I don't know. Uh, for murder, they may send you some, or for life, they may send you somewhere else. They may Go send you to one of the. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't think so. Maybe I, think I don't know. State, yeah. Yeah. I guess it depends on where the crimes were and how what they were and all of that. So, and what the judge says. Yeah. Well, we have a local company here, uh, the uh, Light Marine Air Defense Integrated System. Uh, that's the system that destroyed the drone that came within a thousand feet of the uh, warship in the Strait of Hormuz, and that. Uh, that baby, or that technology anyway, is uh, made right here. Uh, wow, Steve, that'd be cool. Yeah, Steve Zinda, Ascent Vision Technologies Vice President of International Business Development, said that uh, although military drones have been around for years, bad actors have started using recreational drones to wreak havoc. And uh, so a $500 drone, you can throw a grenade on that baby, and <laughs> away it goes, you know. <laughs> it's no problem. So, yeah, that, uh, but that, anyway, that, that, uh, yeah, that helps. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, they made a signal disruption that uh, disrupts the signal from the ground or whoever's controlling the drone uh, between the the operator and the drone, so that the uh, drone simply uh, goes down. So, so uh, kudos to them that uh, they have um, operated this or came up with this ascent vision technologies. Uh, 
is, um, and they also have a sister company called Bridger Aerospace. And uh, it also Ooh. works with drones and makes uh, technology for aerial uh, wildfire fighting. So good for them. So they do a pretty good job. So we're happy about that. And in other news, uh, Bullock, uh, he is going to appoint a local a locals to a new climate council. And we'll we'll chat about that right after we come back after these exciting words from Mercedes Benz and uh, Zip Recruiter. Wow. <laughs> we'll be right back. 14 minutes for the top of the hour. It's Wednesday, July 24, 2019. Uh, 61 degrees outside. We're looking for a high in the mid 80s. And uh, from our text line, Shane, 478 8298. Shane, have they caught the two teen- teenagers that murdered the couple in BC? Not yet. Not- still the, the, yeah, yep, the, the Mounties are chasing their persons. Yeah. They, they know who they are, but they don't know where they are. Well, they're not sure. They, they, oh, okay. were two sep- there were two separate murders, and they don't know if they're connected or not. But they do have suspects. Yeah. You're a, you're a person of interest to uh, police up there, are you not? Uh, a- absolutely. I'll <laughs> of course witness you are. anything. Of course you are. Yes, I'll, I'll witness anything <laughs> to the police. Anything. Well, uh, Governor Bullock has a new climate council. Uh, we got seven Bozeman residents will serve on the council uh, they've got 29 members total, so uh, their uh, job is to um, make the state zero emission free or zero emission or whatever. I don't know, something like that. So 20, 29 members, 100 grand each. Oh, that's only about 2.9 million a year. Yeah, well, I don't, know, I don't know if they're paid or not, but anyway, <laughs> we, they're out there. So uh, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't want to. I don't know that I want to get into the whole, a whole three hours of global warming, but or climate change or whatever the crap is these people are talking about. But anyway, uh, I, well, I guess I can sit around and say, uh, "Gee, fewer cars, more bicycles, uh, scooters are the answer. Scooters are the answer." Well, well the fa- fa- fantastic thing about this is with all the people already involved in this theory, Mm -hmm. studying, analyzing, meeting, discussing, you know, legislating, why do you need another council? I I don't see the purpose of it. Well, we've got to do something within the state, you know. I mean, these people people have to justify their existence somehow. Oh, no, no, no. I know why he's doing this. He's running for president. Well, that too, you know, that's why. Yeah, see, he's got to have this demo, you know, that uh, A, I'm from a red state, and B, you know, I went in a red state, and B, I'm a climate guy, so. I'm a climate guy, and I have appointed a council to prove it. There you are. All right. Not not me, not to prove me, but climate, to prove climate. Let's take a phone call. 522-TALK is the number. Caller, you are on the air. What's going on? Yes, uh, when I heard the when I heard the story about uh, the uh, you know reprobate going around murdering people at uh, video stores, uh, you know things of that sort, I was uh, thinking about the death penalty. And uh, uh, one argument uh, in favor of the death penalty is that you can plea bargain. I mean, with um, the Unabomber, and I'm going to hesitate to say his actual name, but we all know who the mm-hmm. Unabomber For is. Sure. Yeah. And uh, yeah, wasn't it the case that when they threatened him with a death penalty that he uh, Fessed up and cooperated, and uh, yeah. Anyway, I yeah, I, yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to you know argue in favor of the death penalty, and uh, that uh, there's an analogy that I like that you know those who are against the death penalty uh, say that it's uh, you know they they take kind of a cheap shot, sour grapes, you know, say that it's uh, vindictive or it's vengeance or something like that, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, and uh, someone made the analogy that. Uh, you know, if I steal your car and, uh, you know, I'm brought before the court and uh, the judge uh, and the jury, you know, say, okay, buddy, we're going to take your car from you, you know, that's only fair because, you know, I've deprived you of your means of getting around uh, quickly and easily. And uh, so, you know, it isn't fair if I'm allowed to keep my car and, uh, you know, I, mm. I like that analogy. And, yeah. Uh, no, it's so, good one. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Have a good day. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for the thanks for the call. Yeah. Uh, let's take another break. We'll be right back right after this. 
Eight minutes before the top of the hour. It is Wednesday, July 24, 2019. 62 degrees outside. Looking for a high in the mid-80s. Shane Matobin on the line with me. Vancouver, British Columbia. Half man, half amazing. Tommy Galop, your morning mayor in the house. And this is the KMMS Morning Soapbox. And uh, my uh, theory, I guess, uh, the last caller talking about the death penalty, I think of uh, the guy in uh, Florida, uh, Tui, Tui, yeah, I think that's his name, um, buried Jessica Lunsford alive in a trash bag with her bear. She was, what, eight, yeah. nine, something like that. I don't know. She was, kept her for a couple just... days, kidnapped her from nearby house and kept her for a few yeah. days and then buried her alive. So I think That's, the death penalty is too good for that person. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it really is. And I certainly, I, I'm not in favor at all of a lethal injection that these guys go to sleep like a, you know, like you put your dog down. You know, I mean, come on, uh, the electric chair. Uh, I I would love to see him bouncing around, you know, or dangling on the end of a rope, or uh, you know, I mean, that's that's justice, man. That's justice. <laughs> <laughs> well, why not bury him alive? Well, that too. You could do that. Yeah, bury him alive. Why not? That would yeah, be a, it, Yeah. It, 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 it's always been a contradiction for me that people opposed to the death penalty are in favor of abortion. I, you know, so, you know, someone takes someone else's life and you don't think they're, you know, they, they forfeit theirs, but uh, mm -hmm. an unborn child has no choice either about uh, having the, having mm -hmm. lost their life as well. It's, it's a, it's a sad it's you know it's one of those human issues that is predicated on mo emotion more than it is on any you know legal basis. I think mm -hmm. right? it's 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 all emotional. From our text line four seven eight eight two nine eight, there's a reason we have more incarcerated people than anywhere uh, on the planet. Yet we abort nine hundred thousand babies a year. So yeah, huge. What, what you're exactly talk talking about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Genocide. That's genocide. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. It, it, That's what I say. I, I, I don't understand why if Black Lives Matter, why Black Lives Matter isn't outside every abortion clinic in New York City saying, yeah. don't go in. <laughs> Yes, exactly, and uh, that's what they're faced with. And, well, and the they, reality... because of abortion, they're now the second largest minority when they were the the first largest Primary. minority. Yeah. And, 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 and as they and also, become less and less relevant, uh, less and less are the Democrats going to gravitate toward them. The, the, well, we've already seen it now. The Democrats are courting the border. You know, kids in cages ripped from their mother's arms. Oh, my God. Yeah, concentration camps. <laughs> oh, Nazis. Oh, my yeah. God. And they're <laughs> drinking out of the toilet. Oh, <laughs> holy mackerel. Wow. wow, we got to help these people. Yeah, so, you know, don't so forget vote these... Democrat while you're while while we're helping you. <laughs> vote for Democrat because we stood for you when when you were you know trying to get here. That's you know, right, so. those GOP uh, low lives. They don't care anything about you. Get out of yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll well, we'll see. What can I tell we'll you? We'll see. Well, yeah. we won't. You know what? The best thing is we won't see. You and I won't be here to see this. Well, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> we won't be. I guess. Well, uh, Art Wittich, uh, we've had Art in before. He's been a guest here before. And uh, uh, Art uh, did a lawsuit against some letter writers to uh, both the uh, Belgrade News and the Bozeman Chronicle and uh, sued a gentleman uh, for defamation uh, for the letters, which he said were libelous and false. Uh, but they, uh, they dismissed the case uh, because the paperwork uh, wasn't... Uh, uh, issued in time, and uh, Wittich said that uh, he didn't issue the paper in time because just by filing the lawsuit, he alerted everybody. He alerted the two newspapers to the fact that uh, false news was being in there. So I guess uh, uh, message sent. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, and, and I think you go through with the lawsuit and sue the papers. But uh, what can I tell uh, you? Yeah. Well, the cost is never he's never going to recover the cost well no but he's an attorney himself so i mean oh, he oh i have, didn't know that okay. yeah he wouldn't have to, to yeah he, he would uh he would bring the suit himself so uh but uh let's see uh yeah that um uh, well we we have a lot of people who who write to the chronicle and the belgrade uh, paper that uh probably could be sued if if you wanted to if you really wanted to take it 
all the way to uh, fruition, I guess. So yeah, I exactly. Know. Yeah, I don't know. So, well, over in Livingston, a lot going on over there. Lightning uh, struck a Paradise Valley home uh, during a storm wow. that moved through on Monday night, uh, sparking a fire at the structure's roof. And the husband and wife who are leasing the home uh, at uh, uh, located off uh, Trail Creek Road on the west side of Paradise Valley uh, were uninjured by the lightning strike, uh, but a uh, little damage to the uh, roof, I guess, and uh, came and uh, put it out, I suppose. So neighbors went to the home to help the residents fight the fire, but uh, he said they were, they were unable to use the home's uh, well water after the strike knocked out power <laughs> to the structure. <laughs> <Wow>. So... <laughs> So uh, they, uh, a neighbor was able to remove a ridge cap on the uh, home and uh, water from uh, the emergency vehicle was sent through the opening to uh, help slow the spread of the fire until fire engines arrived on the scene. So, so yeah, a little lightning strike out there. We, I remember when I was growing up as a kid, we had a lightning rod on top of our house. Yeah, we did too. That's what yeah. I was just going to say. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Do they not make them anymore? Do they not put lightning rods on? On homes sure any longer? They, I, I would just assume they would. You'd think so, right? I mean, I you mean, would. That's... Yeah. I mean, Cheryl Sheshed got struck by lightning. Um... Cheryl Sheshed. <laughs> anyway. It had to be a high school story that you don't want to talk about, okay? I'm just saying. Yeah, it's a commercial on TV. Right. State Farm okay. or something like that. Yeah, State Farm. Is my Sheshed covered? <laughs> my Sheshed. Cheryl's going to get a she or she shed thanks to State Farm. It's she sheer shed. Yeah. Let's yeah, go to the right. phones. We got to get this real quick before the break. Call you are on the morning soapbox with Tom and Shane. What's up? I'd like to reserve a space uh, on Friday night. All for, right. For people. How many? Two. Two. You got it. My wife and I. All right. You have got, got it, it, man. I got you down. I've got you down. Okay. Thank you. Good. Look forward to seeing you. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. There you go. Two more people coming Friday night. You said they could call in, so now uh, they call are. Call in. Call in and let us know, yeah, if you want to be there. So uh, Friday night, the 26th, this coming Friday, Shane and I live at the Grand Tree, 6 p.m. in the highlight room on the back side of the uh, Grand Tree. It's free uh, to our listeners to uh, come on down and meet other listeners, meet some of the callers, meet some of the guests, meet us, and and uh, we'll be happy to entertain you for uh, an hour or two or whatever. However long you want to stay there, I guess we'll stay as That's long right. as you do. So, <laughs> and, 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 and hopefully we can make this an annual event. Well, maybe we can, yeah, if we're, if we're still on the air. <laughs> Who knows? We're getting ready to start nine months. So <laughs> I know. It's amazing. <laughs> All right. All right, 7 o'clock coming up, and uh, we'll be talking about the uh, five things you need to know and anything else that's on your mind, so stay tuned. Six minutes after the hour of 7 a.m., it's Wednesday, July 24, 2019, 63 degrees outside. We're looking for a high in the mid-80s, mid to upper 80s, actually. Today, Shane Matobin on the line from Vancouver, British Columbia, and uh, Tommy Gallop, your morning mayor in the house, and... Uh, you can watch uh, Muller's uh, testifying uh, live on our website at kmmsam.com if you like. Uh, he is uh, over there uh, going to be uh, testifying pretty quickly, I think, or started at about 6.30. Oh, he's, yeah, he started. Yeah, he's, he's started, already yeah, 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 he's already started. So if you want to watch that live while you listen to us, you can go over to uh, kmmsam.com and uh, crank that up, and uh, we'll have it there. And while you're there, why not uh, – Go up to the uh, What's Hot bar at the top of the page. You'll see Evening with Tom and Shane. You can RSVP our big event coming up this Friday night, 6 o'clock at the Grand Tree. It's a free event. Um, we're going to get together with the listeners and all the uh, callers and the guests and everybody <laughs> come out there and uh, RSVP us so uh, we know how many seats to have for you. We don't want uh, people sitting on the floor or you know, on their hands or whatever, you know, or out in the foyer somewhere, trying yeah, no, to peek no, in no, the there, door. That's right. No, no lap seating. Okay? That's right. No, okay. yeah, no lap seating. <laughs> so we hope uh, you will join us uh, this coming Friday and, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll have a good time there. So uh, yeah. come on out and enjoy the, uh, enjoy us there and uh, we'll have a, we'll have a high old time. Well, uh, let's see. Uh, we're talking about the five things you need to know. Uh, of course, uh, the big thing right now, the Mueller testimony and our poll question of the day is, uh, do you think this is going to change anything? 
Will the Mueller testimony change anything? And the early voting, uh, 77% say no, the witch hunt continues. And 11% say uh, it will create more questions. And uh, 11% say that no, the hunt will end. And uh, no one so far thinks Trump is guilty. So, well, I still think Rosenstein, Rosenstein, you know, that the, the was uh, mm-hmm. behind all of this. I think he's yeah. flipped, and I, I think he got out of the Department of Justice, you know, with a semi-clean bill of health and a goodbye by the Attorney General Barr, is because he's flipped. Yeah. And I think that that uh, uh, when uh, Trump was in England, he told the British send Steele over for, uh, you know. Uh, for, to be in, interviewed, mm-hmm. and when when, when Steele came over, you know, and they uh, and uh, um, uh, the, the in, Inspector General uh, Horowitz has interviewed him. All of a sudden, a bunch of people came back to change their testimony or or you know edit it. And the other thing that tells me that this is turning into a firestorm is the Three Stooges, Clapper, Brennan, and Comey. You know they haven't been uh, on TV. They've they, they've sort of they're all, they're they're go- they're off they're the gone. Rail, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, things uh, are happening. It's yeah. Starting to get snappy now. It's starting <laughs> to get snappy. Our poll question yesterday: uh, After President Trump told Congress women who are U.S. citizens to go back where they came from, do you still support Trump? Oh yeah. Eighty uh, percent said yes, we still do, and sixteen uh, percent said no, and uh, two uh, about three percent said uh, other. Other, so what? Other, other yeah. nasty things. <laughs> other yeah, than that, exactly. well, one was uh, the question itself is meaningless. Trump has no authority to force him to go, and that's true. Yeah. That was really the question. It was whether or not you still support Trump for what yeah. he, you know, for what he said. And uh, they are wrong, uh, but uh, they live here, so uh, stop uh, stooping to their level. Rise above was one of the other comments. So that's all right. Uh, that, that's what that came in. Payment. Yeah, that famous Democratic saying, when they go low, we go high. Right? Yeah, that yeah. one. That's the one. Yeah, that's that would be it. Yeah. So, anyway, is anything going to happen with this with this hearing today? Um, I, I think it's interesting that the attorney with Mueller also had to be sworn in. Or yeah, asked, definitely. Or wanted to be sworn in, so I, I'm not sure what, what they ask a uh, legal analyst next to you. What questions well, the, they may have for him, but I, I think the reason he's there really is because the assembly was his chief of staff when Mueller ran the FBI, mm-hmm. and you know there's so much involved in here. You know the, the 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 real difficulty Mueller has, I think, is having met the president the day before he was appointed, yeah, and, and asked to be made, you know, to, to take over for Comey, uh, Comey at the FBI, mm-hmm. and the, and your president said no. See, that sort of, you know, he should have mm-hmm. recused himself from becoming this uh, head of this investigation because, you know, he he'd already had a conversation involving it with the mm-hmm. president. So it's mm-hmm. he, he's sort of a witness or you know, mm-hmm. potential uh, potentially a witness to his own investigation. So very strange, very strange. Well, the other good thing uh, about this. Um... Uh, Zell, Zebley, Zebley, I guess that's who it is, is with him. Zebley, yeah. Yeah, Aaron Zebley. Yeah. Uh, the one good thing about him is that he's, uh, he's described as a never Trumper. So certainly a, a good thing to have when you're oh, testifying yeah. in front of Congress, uh, a democratically controlled, uh, house anyway, with uh, Nadler and all these other people that are going to ask him questions. So that's right. Having a uh, rather than having a uh, you know red hat mega mega hat and a noose around his neck, uh, <laughs> it's better to, better to have a Democrat there, and uh, and the other thing that uh, I I think bears out that almost everybody on the Mueller thing was uh, a Democrat who donated to Hillary or donated to yeah. somebody, so I I think that lends a lot more credibility that these people had no reason to let Trump off the hook. In well, any way, right. shape, I mean, or form. He, you know, so. Yeah, there were nine, 19 lawyers on his staff. Five uh, were picked yeah. uh, from private practice, and 14 came from the Justice Department at mm-hmm. the direction of uh, Rosenstein. Mm-hmm. And and remember, Mulder this afternoon is before the Senate uh, committee, so he, he's mm-hmm. he's getting going to get a broadside by the Democratic House committee and the Republican Senate committee. So it'll be it's yeah. going to be an interesting day. Yeah. 
Well, and also on the news this morning, they uh, there may be some uh, issue with uh, Comey uh, being uh, at the head of this uh, anti-Trump movement within the FBI, and uh, so or uh, with the uh, I'm sorry, not the FBI, but the um, Attorney General. It's the Attorney General. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, for sure. I, I mean, it, it, it's there's no question. All this has been politicized, and to what degree it comes out. And if, whether anyone's held accountable, that, that'll be the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, if no one's held accountable and doesn't get a perk walk and go to prison, if that, if one or all the, you know, as I call them, the three stooges don't end up going to prison or charged, you know, the Americans are going to lose all trust of their uh, intelligence services. They just are. They, yeah. That's just what's going to happen. That's right. All right, from our text line, 478-8298, uh, who cares how AOC plus three feels now? They started it, and Trump is finishing them, too. And I think this is interesting that Trump gave them the name AOC plus three because that is a separation. They're not equal any any longer. It's, That's right. It's AOC is the uh, leader, and they're just also rans by the, by the side. And I think that's gonna that's going to make them feel, hey, what am I over here, chopped liver? <laughs> well, yeah. And the amazing thing is that you know the demolition squad, the AOC is from Brooklyn, right? That's her. Yeah. Um, and then you mm -hmm. saw what ha went on in Brooklyn this la last weekend with those uh, pictures of the of the police in in Brooklyn being assaulted by people with, yeah, it's sure water, oh, yeah. water mm -hmm. buckets, whatever. Yeah. But still being assaulted. And, mm -hmm. You know, that's not that's anarchy. When when you start attacking your police yeah. that are there to protect you and protect mm -hmm. people, that, well, that's, that's well, a yeah. Well, the other telling uh, thing, of course, was that uh, the police didn't retaliate to those yes. attacks because they got no they would get no support from De Blasio and uh, right. the mayor's department. So, I mean. You know they're they're between a rock and a hard place. I think I think the police force ought to uh, certainly the police union should do something uh, about that. Well, well, the head of the sergeants uh, mm -hmm. uh, group I I don't know what it's called, but the, uh, they had a gentleman on I think on uh, Fox or CNN last night called for the you know uh, police commissioner to to quit because of mm -hmm. this because of you know. Yeah, this is just yeah, if you're not, yeah, if you're not going to support your police officers, you're putting them out there in danger because these people could have just as, well, if they threw water on them now, uh, maybe the next time they come at them with uh, ball bats and, uh, you know, knives. Paint. Or, uh, yeah, paint, whatever. Bleach, yeah, acid. Yeah, you know, it's well, going well, yeah, to gonna... escalate uh, for yeah, sure. Exactly. And, um, you know, I, I, de Blasio is just such a loser. Jeez, what a, well, a slime bag he is. Yeah, and the thing about anarchy is it escalates until the government reacts. Mm -hmm. And and then that causes a confrontation. So the longer, it's like, look at what's going on in Puerto Rico. Oh, I yeah. mean, seriously, this is, a, this is a, mm -hmm. a, a territory of the United States. You know, they voted four or three times to become a state of the union. And... Uh, my goodness gracious, you've got the people in this, literally in the streets of that city, a, a, a territory of the U.S., basically mm -hmm. a, a part of the U.S., demanding the governor resign. I mean, can you imagine if they drive this guy out? That, oh, yeah. You know, every governor that, well, you know, I guess the last person they tried to do that was in Wisconsin, right? With, oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. was, but well, he didn't either. Yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> Well, uh, I don't know. Uh, New York. He went through a recall election too. Remember that? Yeah, uh, yeah. Wisconsin. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, when you, when your consist constituency also hates the cops, <laughs> I guess it's a. <laughs> I'm not sure it's, where that goes. I don't know either. I mean, yeah. I, I I I'm not sure. I know it's the largest police force in the world. Like it's fifty eight thousand if you include the police force for the subway and and you know and the ferry police and and so forth. You know like um, and the police force itself. I, I believe the yeah. police force itself is is like fifty two thousand police. But the point is is that it, it's it it's such a, the infrastructure of a force that large is so significant. That you know the the, mm. the ties to the neighborhood. You would think um, because it's equally black and white. It's not like uh, you know yeah. it's a, it, mm -hmm. they're 
African Americans, there's Asian Americans, Mexican Americans on the force. You think they'd have people in their own neighborhoods or you know nearby or whatever, mm -hmm. and so so this is. And then yesterday they interviewed some woman saying, "Oh, they're just throwing some water around." You know, we were having a water ball. We were having a, a you know a water fight, and you know I I don't know. It's it's yeah. pretty sad. Pretty yeah. Sad. Well, it is. Yeah. All right, we got to take a quick break. Uh, we'll be right back after these important words. Stay tuned. 20 minutes after the hour of 7 a.m., 21 minutes, actually. I just flipped over. Uh, we've got uh, Shea Matabin on the line in Vancouver, British Columbia, half man, half amazing. We've got a caller waiting on the line. And uh, Shane, uh, let's go to the phones. 522-TALK is the number. Caller, you are on the air. And you are not on the air. All right, so. Do they not want to stay, Shane? I guess. <laughs> um, it was general. It was a gentleman about the barbecue on Sunday. Oh, okay. And he wanted to let everyone know it was canceled, so we're, we don't have that event to go to on Sunday. Now. Oh, the warming hut uh, barbecue was canceled on Sunday. Yes, the on warming Sunday. hut barbecue. Oh, okay. They'll res they'll reschedule it in the future, but they want all the listeners to know that it was canceled. Okay. All right. Well, we will not be there. <laughs> we will not be there on Sunday. I don't know what we'll we'll uh, we'll, we'll have to go out drinking. I guess. So. <laughs> I charge you down. Go ahead and cough. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Go for it, man. <laughs> you got to lay off those cancer sticks, man. <laughs> it, it isn't that. I really had a bad infection. I'm on uh, pretty tough antibiotics right now. So. All right. Uh, let's see. We were uh, we were talking about the five things you need to know. So, um, well, uh, Trump and his tax returns again. Uh, New York uh, wants them. The uh, the uh, New York uh, whatever it is down there. The New York Attorney General, I guess, said uh, she shared the law is sound and promised to vigorously defend it against court challenge. So she wants uh, tax returns from uh, uh, the state tax returns. I should say from uh, the yeah president. from him. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I, I don't think there's going to be anything terrible or surprising that he hasn't told people. I really don't. I don't think there's anything. There's no there there, in other words. Well, no. Uh, you know, what? If you have a good accountant, you shouldn't make any money. <laughs> That's so right. There we are. <laughs> Let's go to the they phone. Know, they know the laws. You know. That's right. Let's go to the phones. 522-TALK is the number. Golly, you are on the air. What's happening? Not much. How's it going, guys? Good. How you doing? We're going to see you Friday night? Good. Uh, if I don't fall asleep, yes. <laughs> okay. Well, we may, too. We'll be up about 4 in the morning till 6, so <laughs> yeah, we're going to be there. <laughs> I used to work the early shift too, and it's tough. It is tough. Um, um, with this Donald Trump thing, where he suggested these women go back to where they came from, right? Yeah. He said, he said, go go back to where you come from, fix it, and then come back and show us how it's done. Yeah, yeah, he, that's what he, he said. He didn't just tell him to leave. He, he yeah. didn't just tell him to leave. No, nope, you are yeah, exactly right. You told him to go back and fix your uh, fix where you came from, and then come back and tell us how you did it. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I just wanted to point that out. That's all I have to say. All right. All well, righty. Thank it's, you. It's a good point. All right. Thanks for the call. And hopefully you we'll bet. see you, we'll see you Friday night. We'll uh, uh, we're gonna have coffee there, so uh, we'll keep you awake. You know, come on. <laughs> <laughs> to keep me awake till three in the morning. Oh well, yeah. Okay. Well, there you are. <laughs> what, Tom, what Tom is telling you is, if we're boring you to death, you can stay awake with coffee. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Because we'll, be, we'll probably be really boring. So there you are. <laughs> Thanks for the call. You bet. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right. Uh, yeah, the, uh, I don't know, uh, tax returns, uh, you know, as I've said many times that the IRS didn't have a problem, uh, you know, I, I'm sure they're not giving the president of the United States a Motel 6 audit. I'm sure it's a, you know, Four Seasons audit. Well, and, and in the, the, pr the principal audit isn't going to show his bank loans. It'll show his assets and liabilities, but not going to necessarily show what you know mm -hmm. what bank loans he may or may not have so i mean it, it, it you know they're just it they're mm -hmm. just chasing a 
duck down a hole, you know. It's, well, it's, it's, there there isn't going to be. Well, I I wouldn't say there isn't going to be any, but I would I would doubt there's any bank loans, personal bank loans on his tax return. That's no. that's all going to be on uh, the hundred and four corporate returns. <laughs> I mean, help yourself. <laughs> well, yeah, because the, the we've talked about the the Trump uh, group. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you know it's got it's five hundred companies. I mean, there mm-hmm. are you know every every hotel or hotel they use for his name, yeah, um, you know is is a separate entity unto itself. You know the Chinese Wall. I mean, th- this is an old corporate idea that goes back fifty years. Well, it goes back longer than that. It goes back to the the Dutch Indian uh, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Right. That's, that's, <laughs> but it goes back to the five hundreds almost. Yeah, uh, corporate law does. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see, uh, from our text line, 478-8298, I don't care about his taxes, but he fights it so much, I wonder what he's afraid of. Donations to Hillary, Planned Parenthood, apparently the IRS does have a problem, why he's constantly under audit. Well, <laughs> well, the fact that he's under audit should tell you something, and the president and the vice president are audited every year as a yeah, normal right. course of action, so... You know, this uh, we're not talking about the audit before he came into office. Uh, we're talking about he gets audited every every year. So well, yeah, you you've already known and seen what how your President Obama weaponized the IRS, mm-hmm. and he yeah, when Trump brought up his whole birther issue, uh, you don't think that uh, a phone call wasn't made to the IRS and say audit the get this guy? I mean, come on, give me a break! Like seriously. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, anybody appointed to the IRS, the first question is, you're going to audit Trump, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that would be it. Yeah. As soon as you're elected, uh, we're, yeah. yeah. As soon as you're approved, you know, you start auditing Trump, right? Oh, yeah. okay. And his family, right? Yes. Yeah. And his dog. Oh, he doesn't have any. Sorry. Yeah. Well, I think any public figure like that and anybody who has that kind of money and is, is in the public eye would be, would be audited pretty strongly. That's I right. think because yeah. you're looking for you're looking for any uh, possible influence, as we part, pointed out uh, many times, uh, it would be pretty unusual for Trump to be somebody who could be bought. I mean, what would you give him? <laughs> I mean, yeah. What, yeah. What, what's the what's the price tag he wouldn't turn down? <laughs> you know? I mean, yes, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. I yeah. And, and then how would you hide it? That's that right. would be the other. That would be the other issue, you know. <laughs> so. Well, it, you know, it's it's like you know, yesterday, uh, 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 Trump's daughter got a dog for her kids, and oh, it yeah. looks like a a Korean a Korean Jindu right. breed. Yeah, uh, like a Poon Poon Sang dog in is called in the northern uh, North Korea. Beautiful dog. My niece had one. They're white, very very protective, very pretty dog. Um, and you know, restricted from any export from North Korea, as a matter of fact. So there, there I don't know if there's even purebreds in 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 the rest of the world. But the press gives her a hard time for buying a dog for her kids. Like, you know, it, it, it's just amazing. Like, mm-hmm. and yeah. it's, you know, why'd you buy a dog? Why did you go out and get one? Right. Go to the pound. Let's go. Yeah. Well, yeah. Why, go, why to go to the pick pound. Pick one out. You know. <laughs> well. <laughs> I don't it know. Just matter, you know, yeah. the, 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 you That's know, why I say everybody always uh, makes decisions for the rich, you know. Why do you live in such a big house? Why do you drive those fancy cars? Why do you do this and that? Yeah, why don't I, you give I, that to the why don't you give that to a school lunch program or whatever? <laughs> because I don't have to. <laughs> it's my money. I'll do what I want to with it. Yeah, exactly right. All That's right. It. We got to go. Uh, we'll be back with more right after the uh, news at the bottom of the hour. Fox News and Brooke Foster Weather and Zip Recruiter, of course. You got to talk about Zip Recruiter. I mean, geez. <laughs> but we've we've gone a week and a half with no Noxatril. So I'm excited about that. <laughs> so <laughs> there you are. We'll be back. We are back, and my board went away. So I don't have any control <laughs> of music or anything else uh, at the moment, I don't think. Anyway, <laughs> let me see if we can. Yeah, I got uh, I got music, but uh, I don't know. Uh, boy, we're going to have to play it by ear as far as <laughs> the next two hours go. So <laughs> never had that happen before. So I'm not sure go. uh, what's going on with uh, with my board at the moment. Doesn't seem to want to. Doesn't seem to want to operate. So <laughs> anyway, that's where I am. So 
That's why they call you the remarkable. Shane, are you there? No, I'm I here. don't have Shane either. Okay. You are don't you have there? Me? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I can hear you. Okay. Uh, I can hear you fine. Can you hear me? There we go. Okay. Now I hear oh. you. Oh, well, oh, I guess the headphones. Up, 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 okay. Now we're back. Okay. <laughs> now we're back. <laughs> Hang on. Now we're back. <laughs> It finally came back, but uh, we we ran the we ran the commercials at the forty <laughs> because I'm pushing the buttons here trying to get something to come back, and it finally did. So uh, we'll have a nice long stint here uh, before the next break at fifty. Uh, plus, that was only a one minute break. So hopefully, you heard some of the commercial for whoever it was. <laughs> yeah, I've never had that happen before where the where the whole uh, see I have a. I have a uh, board here that uh, shows, uh, you know, the commercials and the times and when they play and all that stuff. And uh, so I know when to push the button and all of, all of that. So, yeah. So, okay, now we're back, I think. We're back. Yeah. So. Yeah, and they, they were just talking about Mueller and, of course, the, yeah. the, the expected shot, you know. Mm -hmm. You know. Right. You know. So, anyway. From our text line, 478-8298, uh, innocent uh, people uh, don't hide taxes. Transparency, uh, my um, whatever. <laughs> well, he's not hiding his taxes. He, he, he turned all of his taxes in. He's being audited. So I don't know what the comments are. Yeah, I was going to say, he's not hiding it from uh, the IRS, and that's what I say. If the IRS has a problem, they will certainly let us know. <laughs> oh, by, by the way, it, 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 I'm sure everyone, Nadler, the head of the, the committee, uh, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. uh, his big question to Mulder was, did you exonerate the president? And Mulder says, no. Yeah. So that's you're going to see that now mm -hmm. for 24 to 36 hours on every, you know, oh, yeah. network. Mm -hmm. It's just going to – there'll be bulletin boards up. Sure. They, you know, yeah. highway boards up about it. Well, after a two a two and a half year, if you – you know, if you can't charge him, then I don't know where, where you're going exactly. from there. So Exactly. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ivanka Trump's dog is a food group in Korea. That's right. That's true. <laughs> Very good. Uh, let's see. Trump Tower and uh, PP could buy Trump, uh, says Mueller report. Uh, I don't know if it says that in the Mueller report or not, but anyway. Oh. <laughs> PP, I assume, is Putin. But I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I guess. I, I don't know. Let's go to the phones. 522-TALK right. is the number. Caller, you are on the air. What's going on? Good morning, gentlemen. This is Jerry. How Jerry, are you? How are you? You coming uh, Friday night? Absolutely, sir. All Wouldn't right. miss it. All right. <laughs> Wouldn't miss it. Um, right. You know, this audit thing uh, that just been brought up, um, New York State's going to conduct this. Right. Is that correct? Yeah. The, yeah, the uh, uh, whatever the uh, income. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, but, the law they passed is for his New York state taxes. They can't audit his federal taxes. Right. So this yeah. right. But the, it, personal it, and business state filings. Yeah. Right. Yes. And 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 you just mentioned it, Shane. New York passed a a special piece of legislation strictly on this gentleman, on on the president, on Trump. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You couldn't in New York. You could not ask. You could not ask for a person's tax returns. It was illegal. It was against That's the correct. law. That's correct. So, so they're going after him because of who he is. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not going to – are they going to audit Schumer or any of these Democrats? No. Well, no, because it has, it, it's a narrow piece of legislation, and that's why he's suing. Right. You know, so, so, so it's it, – you know, now not has to – they can't do anything now. It's blocked, basically, because he started a lawsuit. But, you know. Yeah, but the, – but, but, you know, that's going to cost them millions of dollars to fight it all the way to the Supreme Court. You know? Well, I, mm -hmm. under, I understand, but they're going after Trump. Because Period. they don't like him. Yeah, it's as simple Period. as that. They're, they're still they're still trying to get rid of this president. It's a, it, yes. it's all part of the uh, of mm -hmm. of their of their plot to get rid of this president. No matter you know, no matter what, they just don't like him. Oh yeah, yeah, it, mm -hmm. exactly. And it's like the third term of abortion legislation they pa passed and cheered about and lit the you know sure. lit the building up in pink. You know, because they're so afraid of of Roe versus Wade being reversed or sent back to the states. Right. You know, they want to have this legislation in place. So, you know, if that happens, you know, like, yeah, yeah it's a typical, it's typical uh, Democrat it's, it's typical, block, mm -hmm. obstruct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a typical New York mentality. 
you, yes. you, you don't like somebody, you go after them. But if if if, if that's the same thing is being, you know, if the same people are doing, um, you know, uh, mm-hmm. uh, 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 in their in their pocket, this, if those people they like, then they won't go after them, even though they're doing something that's uh, untoward. More so nefarious. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it's typical New York. It I, sure is, buddy. You're there absolutely you are. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just the way it is. Hey, uh, gentlemen, I, I wanted to ask something. Have you got any details on this latest budget agreement that, that has come out? Not well, specifically. It, a general, it was a general piece of legislation mm-hmm. to deal with not the budget, but the debt ceiling. Yeah. You know, the budget issue does, doesn't come up till September because, you know, that's the end of the year. Right. This, this had to do period, uh, specifically with your debt. Basically, what it says is there's no debt limit till the 21st of July, 2021. Yeah. Right. So spend all you like. Spend as yeah. much as you like. Go for it. You know, yeah. Whatever yeah. you want to do. Between it's okay. Now and then, yeah, you go to 30 trillion, 40 trillion. Yeah, whatever. It's okay with us. No big deal. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's where we are. <laughs> and secondly, there's no uh, cutbacks. So it, there cannot be any closure the, the, yeah. because of this. Uh, you know, which I didn't, I, this doesn't make sense to me. I, you would have thought the Democrats would have gone up against this so that maybe he'd shut the government down. But anyway, this prevents uh, sequester, which means mm-hmm. cut back is in any department. Yeah. And it also prevents any closure by the government. Yeah, because that, uh, I mean, yeah, that government sequester is that sequester that Obama started is still in place that if you don't, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, if you don't uh, keep to the budget or whatever, you got to cut defense and. All these things, so they just keep the continuing resolution going. So, well, it, it's it, a, it's a mess. A, it's a mess. Oh, I'll say, and there's a lot of people out there think that this was a political move by the president um, mm-hmm. to get on board this uh, this particular uh, budget thing uh, to mm-hmm. prevent any kind of blowback uh, 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 during the next election. Mm-hmm. And well, I, I think what happened was Much- Muchin, I think, went to these people, the Secretary of Treasury, mm-hmm. and he said, you know, now pay attention to this. I know that you don't want to pay attention to, to your president when you go see him, Nancy and Chuck, but, you know, sit your butts down and pay attention. This is what's going to happen if you don't deal with the debt ceiling, okay? This yeah. is what's going to happen. And, and if you don't do – and they just folded like a house of cards and gave them, gave them everything. And mm-hmm. I think the president mm-hmm. was so stunned by it. Yeah. Well, you know, well, it's, it's, it's like – because it know, wasn't a it wasn't a good deal. It's not a good it deal. It's not a good deal, but <laughs> I, I agree. It's, yeah, it's so over the top. Even uh, Mc, yeah. McDonald of the of the you know the, the Senate Majority Leader said, "I'm not going to apologize for this one." I mean, this. <laughs> I mean, if as long as they manage, well, a scary word, but not necessarily with Trump. But as long as they manage it, it's a heck of a deal, actually. You know? Yeah, but well, wasn't I, there I don't a bill think... passed uh, several years ago to uh, uh, limit, the, you know, put a, a cap on the budget, you know, on spending? Uh, well, yeah, that, the, the cap's been in place since George Bush Sr. did two things, put a cap on the debt and require any audit, include any budget had to include audits of every department. Uh-huh. So nobody wants to be audited because they're they're missing money and they don't want to, want to say yeah. we don't we don't know where ten million went no. we don't know where five million went we don't know where eighty right. million went. So both parties came around <laughs> came came up with the continuing resolution this resolution concept to avoid having to approve a budget or consider one, and you know not having to worry about the cap. So all they've done is keep passing continuing resolutions just mm-hmm. to fund the country uh, the co- country. They're, you know, they, they don't audit it or there's no budget. You know, the Chinese, feel, you know, it's an old socialist tenure financing program, right? right. <laughs> I, I, I feel like John Travolta in the Sweat Hogs. I'm yeah. so confused. Exactly. I know, yeah. Good call. Very good call. That's we're, a good call. We're confused, too. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a good one. All right. Thanks for the call. From our text line, 478-8298, uh, other presidents show their taxes while under audit, uh, so many secrets and corruption. Well, Kennedy never showed his tax returns, of course, and uh, that started with Nixon, and most of the other presidents didn't release their tax returns until they were out of office because they, didn't, right, want, they didn't want any uh, uh, any distraction while they were That's in right. office. And then Jimmy Carter was so proud of his peanut farm, and and then 
Of course, after he left office, he didn't tell anyone for two years that his brother bankrupted. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, Billy, they, Billy, so yeah. Billy Beer. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Billy Beer. Billy Beer. <laughs> Billy Beer Carter. Yeah, yeah, from our text line, 478-8298. So, Americans, uh, so American Express gave the United States a black credit, <laughs> one of their black credit cards with no limit. That's pretty much it. That's what they did. They. That's yeah, what they did. yeah, we got no limit on uh, what we can do. So, uh, well, since we're the reserve currency of the world, we can print money to pay any bills, supposedly. But obviously, that would not be a good idea. But theoretically, but, well, but quantum easing uh, mm -hmm. confirmed, and basically, the trust, uh, Treasury Department, Commerce Department, mm -hmm. and the House and Senate all approved yeah. the use of of. Uh, uh, what, what what's the word? Help me here. Uh, viral? No, not viral. Uh, you know, computer computer analoging debt. So you you know it it just it just moves from from one column to another on a balance sheet yeah, within the government. Yeah, it's the ones and zeros. Virtual. Yeah, yeah. It's, we, a, vir it's a virtual debt. Yeah, Thank you. yeah. Okay. We create money out of thin air with no. It's it's yeah, a virtual debt. yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, it's just a, a virtual accounting debt. That's yeah, right. that's pretty simple. Pretty simple, yeah. Debits yeah. on the left, credits on the right. <laughs> Just make sure you pay the interest. Everyone's happy. That's right. <laughs> oh, let's see. The first question for Mueller. Does your report say the president is exonerated? Mueller, no. So please tell me, how, how does Trump interpret this as completely and totally exonerated? Well, because there's no charge against him for anything. Yeah, Mulder, Mulder never charged him with any, yeah. anything. Nor did he. Nor did he refer a uh, charge to the Department of Justice. Two, two very yeah. important things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. So the report. And, and, and so he's basically the, pro, his the report didn't convict him either. So. Yeah. I mean so that Mulder's would be the just, that would be the other question. You know, is there yeah. proof positive? And uh, I, I don't know if any Republican is going to take a chance and ask that. Is there proof positive of collusion? Is there proof positive of uh, no, obstruction? The, it, Mulder's just expressing his opinion to Nadler mm -hmm. in answering that question. Yeah. About being exonerated, he said, "You know, that's a, a, that, and a, a prosecutor who doesn't do that." And Mulder should have said, "That's not the job of a prosecutor." Well, it says, "Does the report say the president is exonerated?" And the report doesn't say he's exonerated. So. Right, but that's not the job of a prosecutor. I know. That's well, it isn't, but you know, I'm just telling you what what what's the question is and what the report says. So, <laughs> well, you know, the bottom line here, folks, is that uh, what you got from Mulder is the same thing you got from uh, Comey about Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. So that's how that's how corrupt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your your system is. Yeah, we. And, you know. Yeah, she was extremely careless, but okay. <laughs> he wasn't involved, but can't exonerate him. Yeah. There you go. I mean, yeah. sad. Well, Very sad. are any of us innocent, Shane? Nobody. I'm guilty. <laughs> I will not talk about high school or college. I've told you that. That's right. Yeah, me either. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe the 10 years after. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, well, okay. Can't tell you. Can't tell you. All right. So <laughs> too much traveling. Too yeah, much traveling. There, that, that's how it works. There you are. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, since we blew that other commercial, we might as well take this one. All right. <laughs> so we'll, be, we'll be right back in two minutes, so stay tuned. Eight minutes before the top of the hour, Shane and Tobin on the line with me from Vancouver, British Columbia, half man, half amazing. Tommy Galuff, your morning mayor in the house. And we've got a caller waiting, Shane, so let's go to the phones. 522-TALK is the number, 522-8255. Caller, you're on the morning soapbox with Tom and Shane. What's up? Hello. They hung up. They hung up. They hung Sorry. up. They flew away. All right. Uh, I was I was hoping they were uh, confirming their um, <laughs> yeah, RSVP to our big event this Friday at the Grand Tree at six o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> Shane and, and, and I live and in person at the Grand Tree. And we got to tell people. I mean, this is a big setup. It's you know the tables of eight. So yeah, know, it's not row seat. It's not row seating. Yeah, well, so, yeah. We're know. not going to sit you in rows or anything. We're yeah. going to put you at tables where you can talk to each other, and uh, you know, yeah. the, you know, you don't have to. You don't have to balance a paper plate on your lap. You know, we'll have ah, little dishes yeah, and right. stuff. Uh, you know, it'll be all right. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be kind of a fun night. So yeah, yeah. it's big time, and it's not paid for by uh, you know. Uh, 
town uh, square uh, or anybody else. Yeah, we're putting... our, our, our political contributions of any. That's time. right. Yeah, yeah, we're <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're we're not we're no special interest group is taking care of us, That's man. Right. We're party free, baby. <laughs> That's we're, right. No, no, no party commitments here. <laughs> we are, we are on our own. <laughs> Yeah, well, it should that. be. Uh, it, it'll be a fun time. I, I hope uh, everybody can show up. And uh, as I say, uh, RSVP us if you can. Uh, either give us a call if you're not uh, uh, computerized or whatever at your place of uh, wherever you are. Uh, let us know how many people are coming so we can record that. And uh, we just want to make sure we have seats for everybody. And um, we don't want you sitting on the floor or, you know, uh, Leaning against the wall or, or out, being out uncomfortable. The, yeah, or out in the foyer somewhere looking in the door. <laughs> you know, we want to make right. sure we got everybody there. So, uh, so uh, hopefully uh, that will uh, that'll help us out. Uh, if we uh, know how many people are going to be there, we can have adequate seating and all that stuff. So, well, we, yeah, we, we want everybody to be comfortable because if the conversation gets uncomfortable, yeah, it's a it's a fair balance. Okay, that's you're, right. Yeah, you're, you're comfortable sitting there, but yeah. you're uncomfortable with the conversation. Well, that's, that's okay. right. Everyone's balanced. Yeah. yeah. Well, we we hope the whole thing will end in a big food fight. That's what we're that's hoping right. for. That's what we're hoping. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> Which is why I'm I I got an extra length of. Uh, you know, plastic, plastic to dry, cover yourself up with, like yeah, from my dry, <laughs> my my dry cleaner, right? You know, yeah, because I want a clear plastic because I want you to see what I'm wearing, yeah. but I want to, you know. Yeah, who's the comedian that used to smash the watermelons and on yeah, the front row right. always had the always had the plastic there? For, <laughs> all right, uh, let's see from our text line four seven eight eight two nine eight. No dark money, <laughs> to Trump. Yeah. I I don't know. Well, uh, I don't know. We're still trying to find out uh, about uh, the question a caller had a couple of weeks ago about uh, what happens, who kept the money, uh, you know, and who gave it back right. to the DNC and who who did you know, that. I, uh, I got to give a they, call. I got to give a call to Open Secrets and get them back on the air again. We had them on the air back when we were on Saturdays, I think, uh, a couple of yeah. times. Uh, talking about uh, money and where it goes with politicians and all of that. So we hope uh, once again that uh, maybe we can get them on the line and have them do some research for us and say, hey, this guy kept the money, this guy turned it back, this guy gave it to charity or, you know, whatever it is. So we'll see. Yeah, the Federal Election Commission has listings mm -hmm. of of uh, things like that, but not they don't provide, like, financials. That's what's mm -hmm. really weird, you know. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, the debt means that each American owes seven hundred thousand dollars. Well, let's check that out because we've got the debt clock. Uh, I've got the yeah, debt clock open right over here. here, and let's see. Each uh, uh, debt uh, debt per citizen is sixty eight thousand, and debt right. per taxpayer is one hundred eighty three thousand. But the assets per citizen is 469,000 and the savings per family is 12,370. Now right, I know people is, listening to me don't have $12,000 in savings. But that's the that's the, no, but, that's the savings per family, uh liquid cash, personal savings, US families divided by the number of US families. Yeah. So there you exactly. are. That's that's where it is. Yeah, and and so the 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 assets uh, of the American people, particularly the uh, baby mm -hmm. boomer generation and so forth, yeah. is is it's pretty significant. There, you know, it's mm -hmm. 154 trillion in assets nationally. You know, yeah, household assets 114 trillion, of which 32 trillion belong to the greatest generation, the baby boomers. So you know, it's, that that's why they want a death tax to pay all this off. <laughs> that's, that's, that's why they want it. That's why they want it. Oh, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find out who that guy was. Gallagher, that's who it was. Oh, Gallagher. Yeah, Gallagher was the guy that smashed the pumpkins and everything. Uh, part of his known for smashing watermelons as part of his act. Yeah, yeah. We had uh, somebody from the text line said it was Carrot Top, and he may do that too. I don't, uh, I don't no, know. But, I, uh, yeah. No, I've been to his show. He, he has a big chest and he pulls stuff out makes you know comedy about stuff in his chest yeah he's a bodybuilder i believe that yeah yeah he's pretty well put together i believe so. yeah he, he's ridiculously oversized yeah so 
All right. Well, we're getting down to the uh, bottom of the wire here for this hour. And yeah, uh, we've got nothing for the next hour. <laughs> well, of course we always have something to talk about. That's true. We'll, we'll have plenty to talk about next yeah, hour. That's right. so. Exactly. <laughs> so anything you want to talk about, by all means, uh, give us a call at 522-TALK or email us or uh, text us or uh, app chat us uh, on your smartphone. Uh, we you can, lost uh, me. Yeah, any any way you can. Uh, there's so many ways you can reach us that uh, it's almost uh, I don't know, boy. Uh, let's see. The purpose uh, from our app chat uh, line. The purpose of the special prosecutor is to see it uh, cha- uh, charges to see if charges can be brought. Exoneration is none of Mueller's business. That's right. Yeah. So uh, it, it, it's a matter of him defining. You know, and that's why I've got this lawyer here. You know, the lawyer's sitting there going, oh, that's not within the four corners of your court. Don't answer it. Okay. (laughs) All right. Let's go to the phones real quick before we have to go. Caller, you are on the air. What's up? Hey, I just wanted to check in with you guys and see if you had uh, seen the letter to the editor a few days ago from the uh, Montana rabbis that uh, in which they – they sort of vilified Donald Trump for being a racist about his remarks to the squad. And, yeah, I thought there was a certain irony there in that at least a couple of members of that squad had openly uh, shared their disdain with the Israeli people and called them pigs and they should be eliminated. Wow. And, hmm. Yeah, I, I'm surprised mm-hmm. that more people have not. Yeah. I guess been made aware of that, but um, I'll look I'm it up. Not... We've we've got the God Squad on tomorrow at eight o'clock. Well, that's the reason I called. Is yeah. uh, is I yeah. hope that you'll bring that up with them because there's a, there's yeah. really a, there's really a problem there. You know. We, yeah, I'll look at I'll look up. it up. I'll look it up in the okay. uh, past uh, things of the uh, of the Chronicle. So, gotta go. Hey, yeah. thanks for the call though. Thanks for bringing that to my attention. Uh, we'll uh, we'll talk about it tomorrow at eight o'clock. Yeah, thanks. All right, we'll be right back. All right, welcome back, everyone. It's six minutes after the hour of 8 a.m. It's Wednesday, July 24th, 2019, and uh, we've had a caller patiently waiting through the break, Shane, so let's take a phone call, 522-TALK. Not there? Not there. Okay. But 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 I got that banging sound in my noise, so I think you know who it was. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll try again. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Five things you, you need to know. We might get through it. I've mean, got an hour to get through two more. <laughs> two more like, things. I mean, I, like in the last <laughs> two weeks, we've been so busy with our great callers that I know. it's been fabulous. And we've only gotten through this like twice in two weeks. This I know. Uh, let's uh, take uh, from our text line four seven eight eight two nine eight. Mueller said no to exonerate. Um, let the spin begin. Poll needs an opinion. I don't care what Mueller says or how corrupt Trump is. I will support him regardless. He has an R next to his name. Her emails. <laughs> so, there you go. I guess. Okay. Uh, can you exonerate someone when there wasn't a crime? Well, that's the big argument. You know, yeah. how can you accuse someone of obstructing mm-hmm. justice when it turns out there was there was no crime that was committed, so I, it doesn't make sense. Well, I was going to say, uh, you know, if Mueller can say no to exonerate, then there must be a crime. <laughs> I mean, right. I mean, it's pretty black and white. There's no gray area. Well, there might have been a crime, but we couldn't find it in two and a half years. Well, I, that's why I think that's just his own personal opinion, you know, and mm-hmm. that he didn't refer any criminal crime to the Department of Justice, and he did not indict him and return and and pursue the, that indictment in court. So mm-hmm. it's over, done. But, of course, you know, the Democrats, they just, they, they know a firestorm's coming. They're trying to put up a firewall, and it's not going to happen. Well, I, I don't think they're going to stop. They're looking for impeachment, um, pretty much. Uh, they've got right. to have, have some kind of a crime to do impeachment. And, uh, you know, I mean, they've got all next year to do it. And uh, I mean, is my bubble so small that I, I can't believe that? I, I'm serious. I, I I must live in like uh, you know people talk about these bubbles you live in. Yeah. Mine's about the, it's got to be about the size of my head because it would explode to think that the Democrats would really want to impeach this president. I, I just like it. That's just wild to me. Yeah. Well, that's that's what we're looking at. Uh, that's what Nadler wants. That's what uh, um, 
you know, Cummings wants, uh, Maxine Waters, uh, that's what they all want. So, you know, is well, it going to happen? And, I don't know. And clearly the only, the only policy discussion they're having about anything is racism. That's it. They're, mm -hmm. they're not discussing anything else. Yeah. They're not discussing the economy or the world or politics in the world or mm -hmm. the risk yeah. of war in the world. Mm -hmm. All they're talking about is racism, right? You know, it's gone from Russia, Russia, Russia to racism, racism, racism. Okay. <laughs> Let's take a phone call. 522-TALK is the number. Call you on the morning soapbox with Tom and Shane. What's up? This is Clint. Hey. I've been watching this thing ever since it started this morning. Uh, how, how good is it? Come on, give us an update. Well, here's what I'm thinking here. They're picking the president apart, and the Democrats are. Uh, it's going, uh, I think it's it's sick myself, but to even question him, Mr. Mueller. But the, the report's out. The Congress has a right to ask him, and I, I believe in all that. But here's what the thing that's bothering me. Whether Trump did anything wrong or didn't do anything wrong is really immaterial to me. He's our president. He's doing a pretty good job on the economy. Uh, I don't care how many girls he slept with. That's it. That's how, how he runs the country. What I'm interested in now, what is going to happen to our markets? When this, when this Mueller report is all done and people will have suspicions about our president, what in the hell is going to happen to our markets? Now, that's a question I got for you two guys. Well, that's market, market the hell out of me. Yeah, well, the market went up yesterday because uh, China and the U.S. are talking again. Yeah. Uh, it's down 75 points right now. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. The markets don't seem to be reacting like they used to. I mean, they used to have wild swings, Shane. I know and, that. And we haven't seen that. Um, you know, Microsoft, or uh, not Microsoft, but uh, uh, Facebook just got hit with a $5 billion fine. They're at 200 bucks. Yeah. You know, okay. I mean, they're down $1.97. Well, that's good stock. Here. Well, yeah, I know. Yeah, but, you know. Yeah, yeah the Justice Department yesterday, uh, you know, announced, and this is number four of things you need to know, about mm -hmm. an antitrust review of major mm -hmm. tech firms. Well, that's Google, that's Facebook, that's Apple, that's Twitter. I mean... And and the market today they responds to it with what? Like Tom said, burp. Yeah. Yeah. They, they mm -hmm. burp. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Well, I and speaking of that, what are you what are you going to well, do? What are you going to do with something like Amazon that controls five percent of the market? It doesn't control ninety five percent of the market. Right. I mean, it's pretty hard to bring an antitrust against Microsoft saying, "Well, <laughs> I, I do five percent of a dollar." Come on. Well, Tom, here's <laughs> yeah. some, here here's something. Mm -hmm. All right. Now. Do you remember the show, Billy Cunningham's show was on this radio station at night? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You remember what he said about us involving ourselves in 123 different countries in oh, their right. elections? Oh, yeah, sure. How yeah. come? How come it is? None of this has brought out what we do to try to influence other countries' elections. Why do we criticize somebody, uh, Russia, for trying to influence ours? <laughs> yeah. Now, well, you know, we, this, wait, no, wait, yeah, that's not fair, Colonel, because, you know, Tom and I have talked about this, that 72 countries, uh, the CIA has, has changed governments in 72 countries in a lot, since World War II. Sure they have. Yeah, and, we've, and we've gone through all the things, and, you know, the assassinations that they back, like Allende in Chile and Pinochet's military overthrow in Argentina, and on and on and on and on. So, well, there's one thing I mean, about, you know, about it, uh, Shane. If I was running for the presidency, I would want I don't give a damn if I'm running today or tomorrow or whenever. I would want to talk to Putin. I want to talk to Xi in that China. I would want to talk to him. It's no conclu conclusion. It's I want to talk to him and see how their countries are doing so I can kind of prepare what I'm going to do for our country. Now what the hell is wrong with that? Nothing. I mean, you remember that interview before the election when uh, Trump said that uh you know the United States isn't innocent. You know, look, you know, we're, mm -hmm. yeah. look, look, look what we and and, and the mm -hmm. media went crazy. Remember, like, like I know. It, Our Obama same, said, "I'll have more flexibility after yeah. the election to deal with you." I mean, come on. I mean, yeah, is that right. wrong or right? Yeah. You know, I, I agree with you. And, and he let Putin walk in and take the Crimea after his election. So I like. Well, it does, here's 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 something that bugs hell out of me. We have no damn business in Europe. 
We need to be right here in this United States and the North American continent helping this country rather than Europe. Let the Europeans do that. Let us bring our guys home and to hell with them. Let them do what they want and we'll do what we want. Let's protect our country. Oh, they'll come and say, well, we're doing that. We're spending all this money in Israel. We're protecting Israel. We're doing this and we're doing that. And we're in a about 150 or 60 different countries with bases. What in the hell is the United States doing spending my money, your money, and everybody else's money on other countries? <laughs> well, because we're a global market, we've got interest in those countries. There, well, that's there, fine. there are companies there that are American companies that need protection from, uh, you know, Why are they there, Tom? Are there. Why well, are they there? Be because of the tax tax situation in this country well part of, partly but they're also there because we've opened labor. we've opened uh, well the, mm -hmm. not so much anymore because everything is computerized yeah. but what they're there for is we've opened those markets and they're selling directly that. they're selling directly in those countries not making it there and sending it back here to be sold i understand all that but yeah. the thing is is we better uh we better take care of our own bailiwick here Rather oh, yeah. than put put sure. so much, well look at look what's happening in Iran right now. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean this is oh, all yeah. crap. There, there, there's a hundred there, there's a hundred and ninety three official members of the UN. Yep, that's the US their job, a, isn't it? And and the United States has a hundred and sixty eight bases in a hundred and ninety three of those countries. There you go. See what I'm saying? <laughs> God Almighty. Well, anyway, numbers don't lie, Clint. <laughs> oh God, I'll tell. Boy, I'll be glad to. It's I'll just a, I, it's just I, another I, form of foreign aid, kid. Yeah, I, that's exactly I'm, right, baby. You got it, Eagle Man. I'm sitting he, here today he, watching he this on the. He just dinged the bell again. I'm sitting here today watching this on television. I'm trying to get sick, but I have to call you guys and express right. my opinion. All right, man. Well, we're glad we always make you better, feel better. There, oh yeah, well, yeah. Well, All right. I ain't today. I'll see you Friday. All right, All thanks right. a lot. All right, let's take another call. Five two two talk is the number. Caller, thanks for waiting. You're on the air. What's going on? Are you there? All right. Oh, I, Must not. Friend. Okay. Sorry about oh. that. All right. It's okay. No, but he, yeah. he's right about it. you know I mean and you're and you're you're both right mm -hmm. I mean the, the United States is there I mean it's look you, you know for what 200 two centuries the sun didn't set on mm -hmm. the British Empire you know so you know for 75 years it hasn't set on the US basic Empire right I mean, that's what's going on we have to agree with that yeah I mean whether it's for commercial reasons or military mm -hmm. or political, I mean, you know, those are the three reasons we're everywhere. Well, Canada, too. We're everywhere in the world. You know, like our, our country is just rocking because our prime minister gave $700 million up for abortions in, to finance abortions in other countries. Okay. And the, and the Canadian people are like going, are you kidding us? $700 million? Like you can you don't think there's more important like homeless? Yeah, you know, <laughs> I mean, crazy stuff. Something. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's take a quick break, and uh, we'll be right back in about two minutes. All right, 19 minutes after the hour, 8 a.m. It is Wednesday, July 24th. Don't forget our big get together, Shane and Tom, live and in person at the Grand Tree on Saturday, the 26th, and. Uh, we uh, at 6 p.m. Uh, in the highlight room on the back side of the um, uh, Grand Tree on the west side, I guess I should say, where the convention center is. And uh, we will be there live and in person. And we hope that you will join us. It's a free event. And uh, we ask that you RSVP us at KMMSAM.com. Look on the What's Hot bar for Evening with Tom and Shane. Click on that and uh, give us a, a name and a number of people that are coming so that we can have adequate seating for everyone. We're going to have tables, and you can sit there and uh, chat with other listeners, other callers, find out what uh, what uh, you guys are interested in, and uh, we'll try and entertain you as best we can and uh, feed you and <laughs> take care of you, <laughs> whatever. So we'll, uh, we'll just have a high old time. So we hope you'll join us. Again, that's uh, this coming uh, Friday. And uh, we are going to be at the Grand Tree, 6 p.m. Shane will be on the air with me live that morning, 6 a.m. And then we'll be at the Grand Tree, 6 p.m. Friday night. So 
Excellent. We hope you'll join us. And RSVP, if you if you don't have uh, computer access or whatever, uh, give us a call. Let us know how many people are coming. Five two two talk is the number. Uh, you can call us off the air if you don't want to. If you don't want to be on the air, or you can just say, uh, when we answer the phone, you can just say one or two. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know. That's pretty scary, isn't it? <laughs> maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe, it is. Yeah, it's maybe, scary. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe we better say one person, two persons. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> or yeah. whatever. How many are coming? So. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to get in trouble with the FCC. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Hey, Amen. Keep it, keep it dry. All right. So well, let's see. We got some text uh, things coming in. Uh, let's see. Uh, from our text line, uh, very few have even wanted to know if Trump um, obstructed justice. They're just giving excuses why it's okay that he did. I once thought they were loyal to us, loyal to the law. I am saddened to see how wrong I was. It was not Mueller's job to determine a crime. It's shocking that Clint doesn't care if he's corrupt, guilty, or immoral as long as the stock market is doing well. I remember when that stuff used to matter. This is what is destroying the uh, GOP. So, well, it may be. Well, I guess we'll, I guess we'll see. But the guy is elected, guys. <laughs> whatever his past was, whatever, whatever he did, whatever he didn't do, Clinton was certainly no choir boy either. But. I don't yeah. know. The Democrat Party still seems to think he's pretty cool. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I don't know. Anyway, from our text line, uh, a prosecutor's job is not to exonerate. And I think we've mentioned that uh, earlier also. And yeah. uh, Mueller is still butthurt over Comey. So, <laughs> I don't know. Ouch. Ouch. That hurts. Yeah. All right. Let's take a phone call. Uh, call you are on the air. Would that be me? That'd be you. That would be. Well, a little while ago, they just took a break. Yeah. In the Mueller hearings, and how Mueller, would how would you know? Well, because they said so. <laughs> oh, okay. I was just thinking, you know, that it was just boring questions that looked like a break. No, but <laughs> Mueller looked grateful when he was walking out of the room. Oh, okay. Which, that yeah. they were taking a break. Yeah. <laughs> He was, he lo- is, was he looking for the exits or what? <laughs> oh, yeah, with a, with his whole entourage. Oh, jeez. I thought he was only supposed to have one, but it looked like there was like four or five of them. But, and did I hear you get a caller earlier who said that uh, the state of New York passed a law saying that they can look at your um, tax returns? Personal, yeah. So they had to pass legislation for that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, they, it, 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 well, it'd be an invasion of privacy, I would think. But you know. specifically to Trump, not not anyone else. Okay. Mm-hmm. But it, so that they pass a, a law so that they can look into things that happened prior to the passing of the law as far as the yeah. taxes are concerned? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, that's, that's ex post facto law. It's forbidden for, from the, for the feds and forbidden for the state. So I know that's, that. that's why Trump. That's why Trump's suing him. Right, mm-hmm. and he should be. And he should be suing him. And if, <laughs> and if the, your your texture thinks that the the GOP is destroying themselves, what does he think the Democrats are doing? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, I mean, come on. I ain't seen nothing. I mean, the the the, the thing that the Mueller said the most so far is because uh, you repeat the question. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's because they're that's because best line because they're fourteen minute questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh God. But yeah, that's it. The guy gets to the end of the end of his time. Time's up. Did you repeat the question? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh time's up. <laughs> Answer the question. But. Time's up. Sorry. Anyway, it just can't, it's, yeah. I can't help you. Sorry. It's it's another dog and pony show. Mm-hmm. There's uh you know, he he was questioned about Miss Bud, and I think that was a pretty damn good question. The guy lied to him three times, and he didn't get prosecuted, but everybody else did. Yeah. Right. But, so we'll see. Yeah. I don't think there's going to be much coming out of this, but you never know. No. no, no, I don't think so either. I don't think anybody thought there was going in, but. 
I think Nadler just wanted to get on the record, so you couldn't exonerate him. Is that right? Yeah, no, I couldn't yeah. exonerate him. So, okay, well, just, so that's just dragging it on. Yeah. They're just going to drag it on. Anyway, have a good one, guys. All right, man. Thanks a lot. Thanks, buddy. Okay. See you Friday night. Yeah. 522 Talk is the number. Caller, thanks for waiting. You're on the air. What's going on? Yeah, Ken here. I was just kind of curious. Uh, we were talking about what our presence, the United States presence around the world. Yeah. I thought a lot of that was because of, uh, and let me finish here, the petrodollar and the fact that we are the reserve currency of the world, that we cut these deals with all these countries that use our currency. So what, what do you guys think about that? Isn't, isn't that why we're our presence around the world? Well, that's certainly part of it. I would, I would agree with you there that uh, oil and, uh, well, and, and also, too, that, um, you know, doing business with the United States is advantageous to many countries. You yeah. know, for us to be there, for us to have a physical presence there and to sell our goods and services there. Now, in the case of India, for example, uh, they put a 100% tariff on uh, Harley-Davidson, uh, you know, because they make motorcycles, too. But they they recently dropped that to 50, uh, 50%, I believe. But, you know, if you want a Harley-Davidson, you're going to pay extra for it in India. But yet they, you know, they're still willing to make them there, so... Right, you know, but right. I mean yeah, that's just, I mean that's just, part of it, yeah. Yeah, just for mm -hmm. the callers uh, mm -hmm. to know, uh, the, the United States has not sanctioned the use of their currency a, as a uh, sovereign currency in another country. Yeah, no, it, it's the reserve currency yeah. of the world. Uh, oil's traded in dollars; it's not right. traded in pesos or loonies mm -hmm. or right. you know British but, pounds but or whatever. Wrong. Yeah, it's, um, there, I think it's eighteen countries that the. Uh, the primary currency in the country is the U.S. dollar, and I'm just letting him know that's mm -hmm. not sanctioned by the U.S. government. That, yeah. It, 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 they've, yeah just the, chose, they've just chosen to use it. Because it's reliable. And, well, yeah. And I, yeah. <laughs> with, with inflation, like in Venezuela, yeah. you know, the, the, when we laugh about what's going on in Venezuela, and Tom oh. will tell you what the inflation rate is. I will. It's, it, it's in relation to the U.S. dollar. So, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you have currency to go to the market, you want to take a U.S. dollar. Right? You don't want to take a million Venezuelan francs or lira or whatever they are, right? Yeah. Venezuelan inflation rate currently 2.8 million. <laughs> That's their percent. 2.8 million percent is their, rela their inflation so, no, rate it, currently. Let's just, say, let's just say in relation <laughs> to the U.S. dollar, you know, you, we pay three, you pay like $2 for a loaf of bread, right? Yeah. So, you know, you'd need... They're going to pay $2 million for a loaf of bread. <laughs> yeah, they're paying $2 million. They're going to have to take a wheelbarrow of cash down there. Or they're going to have to Germany. make million-dollar notes or something. So Germany in the 1920s, yeah. Yeah. Hey, thanks for the call. Yeah, yeah all right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate Bye. it. Yeah, yeah. we got to go. I'm up against the clock. Thanks for the call. Yeah, I appreciate it. All right, uh, we got to duck at her, pay a couple of bills, and uh, it is Wednesday, July 24th. It's hump day. hump day. No Mike today, but uh, Mike will be here uh, tomorrow at 7 and the God Squad at 8, and uh, we'll be uh, chatting with those folks tomorrow. So we hope you'll uh, be uh, around for that. And, of course, our big gala on Friday night, 6 p.m. at the Grand Tree Highlight Room. Tom and Shane live and in person, so we hope you'll make it. It's a free event. Come on down and see us. 24 minutes uh, before the uh, top of the hour. It's Wednesday, July 24, 2019, 74 degrees outside. Looking for a high in the mid to high 80s, and it is uh, hump day, Shane. Uh, <laughs> we are halfway done uh, here, so... Uh, let's see. We had a uh, email. Uh, we're we're talking about the uh, fines for Microsoft and the fines for um, uh, Facebook. Uh, where does the money go uh, to the Treasury? Yeah, I believe it does. It goes yeah. right into the or goes right into the general fund. And uh, Equifi uh, Equifax fined seven hundred million for a breach of Social Security numbers and information. Uh, one news report said four hundred twenty-five million goes to those affected, and another report said those affected have to prove fraud. Uh, even at uh, that, uh, who gets the remaining $275 million? Well, I think anything that's not awarded to the people injured would go to the uh, 
uh, go to the um, uh, Treasury. If if you were a victim of identity theft, for example, and lost uh, X number of dollars through your credit card or whatever, you mm-hmm. would be uh, you would you would submit uh, that information to uh, get uh, get a refund or get get a partial right. uh, payment right. back from uh, from that. Uh, auto insurance is mandated, and they also pull credit and Social Security numbers. Uh, Nationwide used Equifax. Uh, Nationwide was uh, breached and fined. Uh, Tim Fox reported uh, they were going to use the money to beef up security. So what about the people who were affected, not only once by Nationwide but by Equifax? Well, as I said, I think they would they would have recourse to file a claim yeah. and uh, be, you know, be— uh, paid uh, all or whatever the uh, whatever the amount was. Uh, uh, you may not get all of your money back. Uh, we do not need to uh, credit. We do not need a credit score for insurance. Will we have to have credit scores for driver's licenses next? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, your credit score will affect your uh, car insurance. It'll affect your home loan. Um, yeah, your credit report. Uh, I have said many times with all the abuse and all the hacking of credit card numbers and everything like that, I don't see how any credit report would be accurate. Yes, that's correct. But yet they they put the full faith and credit of the yeah. of the banking system on Equifax, TransUnion, and uh, whatever the other one is. Uh, I forget. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Um, so let's see, uh, what else? Uh, baby boomers retiring, uh, is opportunity for court appointed guardians and family members to spend their money and put them in a nursing home. Uh, Ro- Rosendale reported one month ago that, uh, in the news feed that financial abuse comes from family members. Then about a week ago also reported that attorneys also built money from them. What is going to happen when the boomers are gone next generation has minimal assets. Well, there's a reason the next generation have minimal yeah, assets because right. <laughs> they didn't listen to they didn't listen to the baby boomers <laughs> and right. take care and save ten percent of their income. <laughs> that's that's where they were. So, all right, uh, let's see. Uh, let's go to the uh, text line. Uh, uh, why would an Indian want a Harley? <laughs> well. <laughs> I don't know. People well, in it, people it, in people in India do. I think that's a play they, they on do, words, yeah. of course. Yeah. Of course, the, pro- the problem with something like a Harley yeah. is infrastructure. That that's why in Japan mm-hmm. and uh, China, in particular, uh, they they are par- popular because the infrastructure mm-hmm. is so well maintained. But uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's pretty tough. To, it's pretty tough to drive a Harley at seventy or eighty k or miles an hour. On you know on a bumpy dirt road you know mm-hmm. it, it, it doesn't work well yeah uh, let's see Mueller uh, dra- uh, dedica- decorated Marine Republicans respected career Trump ten thousand plus lies while in office a uh, lifelong immoral cheater uh, Trump cult uh, Mueller is a bad cop Trump is our hero wow that's uh, yeah. that's pretty open ended yeah discussion isn't it yeah. Uh, I'm so bummed I won't be there to meet you all. I'll be in Billings. Have fun. And Antifa is destroying our country. Yeah, that's a, uh, you know, this is an interesting context uh, of discussion we might have in the future because I do believe that there's cause for the Department of Justice and even the State Department to declare Antifa a, mm-hmm. you know, uh, a terrorist, a terrorist group. You know, mm-hmm. any, uh, any, yeah. I mean... It, they they all they all want to talk about uh, what is it the white nation or what do you call it? white nationalists in the Aryan country, nation right? yeah mm-hmm. or the Aryan nation or whatever mm-hmm. but uh, yeah Antifa is clearly a, a, a you know a, a terrorist group I mean they're all in all, all about anarchy mm-hmm. all right we got to take a quick break because um, capitalism reigns here absolutely so we'll... <laughs> commercialitis. That's right. We'll be right back. 15 minutes for the top of the hour. It is Wednesday, uh, July 24th, 2019. 74 degrees outside. We got a caller waiting on the line. Caller, you are on the air. What's going on? 
So, yeah, I'm watching this uh, Mueller uh, investigation thing on yeah, the news or sure. on TV. It's, it's, it's pretty obvious that this poor older gentleman is mentally dilapidated. I mean, he's definitely not 100%, and he was less than that. And the fact that he was in charge of this investigation is such an insult to every American citizen. <laughs> I mean, you, you can just watch him up there. It's amazing. Wow. Uh, well, I haven't, I haven't been able to watch any of it since we've been on the air, but uh, yeah, exactly. uh, I'm sure we'll see the, all the sound bites, and I'm sure they'll repeat so it from time sorry. to time. I, yeah. I feel so sorry for him. He was obviously used by these people. Hmm. And, you know, you talk about how he has this all these Trump haters on his team. They just took advantage of his mental incapacity and did whatever they want. And it's obvious by listening to him, he doesn't know what's going on. I mean, he hmm. has a question and then a follow-up question on the same topic. And he doesn't know what they're talking about. Yeah. I mean, it is really, really sad. Hmm. Well, I, uh, oh, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, haven't heard, it. I haven't heard him in uh, uh, yeah. for a while. Well, they're not going to, and they're not even saying anything about it on the news. You know, they go, they break to like CBS, mm -hmm. and not one of the reporters is even mentioning what is obvious to everybody who has like an elderly grandparent. I mean, this guy is losing it. It's mm. so sad. Yeah, that's and, too you know, bad. And this kind of goes into. What's going on with our country? I mean, we had like John McCain, who was a great guy, but somehow he became more important than his position. Mm -hmm. I mean, the guy was mentally debilitated from a brain tumor, yet they still thought it was so important for him to stay in office. Yeah. He became more important than his position. This is the problem with like most of our senators. I mean, obviously, Nancy Pelosi is going down fast. Obviously, that guy in Vermont, I mean, he can barely even speak. And then we have another <laughs> senator who's got who's got Chinese spies as her driver for like 20 years. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we got to wake up, man, and get rid of these old codgers because they're destroying us. So, okay. So, well, yeah, good luck with all that. <laughs> well, thanks for the info. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I, I don't know if I appreciate it or not. <laughs> well, no offense to you, but you're not in charge of running our country into well, the ground right now. That's true. If you were, I'm sorry. I would have to be as honest with you as I am about these guys because – being dishonest about this is not helping anybody, okay? Let's, we could all be nice and everything, but you know what? In yeah. certain parts of the world, if you're this nice, you get you get taken advantage of. All and right, right now, hey. we're getting taken advantage of. All right, Have man. a good one. Hey, thanks for the call. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for the info. All right. Now, that, that's a great call because uh, that's totally out of left field and unexpected, right? Yeah, like, that was kind of, uh, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Uh, Let's go to our text line. Uh, I agree with the last caller, so yeah. <laughs> there we are. So uh, I guess if you're watching this, um, uh, I don't know. As I say, I, I, I've i seen very little of uh, Mueller other than that um, press conference that he did that was, what, six, yeah, minutes, minute. six minutes or something like that, and he read that. So yeah. uh, I, as far as him uh, responding off the cuff and being the ex-head of the FBI and you know, well, his, the, when, when all I was his career call, and everything, yeah. When, when I was talking to that caller during the commercial and he was expo expanding on it to me, mm -hmm. he, he was saying that it's very clear that he did not write the report. He, mm -hmm. he, he has no idea what's in it. You know, when they said, mm -hmm. you know, don't go outside of the report, yeah. Yeah. he can't because he doesn't know what's in it. So now you know why the lawyer is there. <laughs> so you got you got to pass it before you can find out what's in it, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, and and so gotta... the lawyer is there because he does, Mulder has no memory, apparently, judging from what the caller was saying. Yeah. And uh, so clearly they had to give him a lawyer because he's just. Well, I'm Short wondering, was, was he just the administrator? Was he say, okay, yeah. Strzok, go uh, interview this guy and let uh, Joe over here write it up, and uh, yeah. you know, and then uh, all of a sudden we'll have a report uh, down the road somewhere? Right, uh, and, yeah. and clearly uh, the other thing is, is now you know from the comments this gentleman made, but clearly the, that's why Trump probably went during the interview was sitting there going, you're not. You're not you're not mentally prepared to take over the FBI again. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, that's what it sort of sounds like, right? Well, you, you, you could know. be. And if people get if people get uh, that feeling on their yeah. own, yeah. that doesn't go well for the Democrats, does yeah. it? All right, let's take another phone call. Five two two talk is the number. Five two two eight two five five. Call you on the morning soapbox with Tom and Shane. What's up? Hi, this is Donna. Hi, Donna. <laughs> um, totally agree. I just mm -hmm. I, I haven't been watching it, but I caught five, uh, four minutes of Matt Gates from Florida, Republican, 
in, interrogating <laughs> Mueller. That's what it looked like yeah. because Mueller was just – he looked like he was going to have a stroke. So, <laughs> Did he really? Yeah, he really, looked, he really looked like he was stressed too majorly. So. <laughs> hmm. So well, I, we, I, was, you know, I don't know. We were just discussing that, you know, probably the, the reason they uh, allowed this lawyer to come with him is because he just he probably has no memory of the report or, you know, what he it. didn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keep up the good work, guys. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you much. Friday night. <laughs> What's that? See Friday night. I know I'm in Livingston and I don't get around uh, that well, uh, but I listen and I enjoy you. So. Well, thanks a lot. <laughs> we appreciate that. All right. Uh, yeah, okay. Thank you. All right, uh, Shane, we got another phone call. I'm going to let you deal with that, and uh, we've got to take the rush update, and we'll be right back in a few minutes. All right, five minutes for the top of the hour. We had a caller patiently waiting that Shane's been interrogating, so let's go to the phones. 522-TALK is the number. Caller, you are on the Morning Soapbox with Tom and Shane. What's up? Well, Tom, it's Kevin. I feel like Mueller now. I've been being interrogated for the last few minutes <laughs> by Shane, and I, uh, I, don't, I don't know whether I should piss my pants or, or get up from the table and fall down. Well, all right. <laughs> he is he's more than just a pretty face. <laughs> he is, man. He's a bully. He's like Weissman. He's yeah. like the pit bull of uh, uh, Mueller's team. Yeah. So that, that caller was right. You know, I mean, Mueller, 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 whatever, however you pronounce his name, he was the the, the pretty face, the Repub- the so-called Republican. He was the mil- you know the former Marine. He was going to get in there and figure this out. If Trump colluded with Russia, he didn't do anything. They brought in all the stooges, like I said, like that guy Weissman, who apparently is a real dirtbag, and he ran the show. And, and Mueller was just kind of the, the face of it. And that's why when they when he has no idea what's going on, and when they hand him a report, he's just sitting there reading it, like, you know. And it's supposed to be the report that he wrote. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I think that's why he's, you know, and obviously that's why he's up there with his attorneys. But I don't think the Republicans are going to get anything out of this because, you know, they've had months to prepare for this. He's just going to say, well, it wasn't in the report. I can't talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, they're not going to put him up there if they think the whole thing's going to fall to, to pieces because, uh, you know, three Republicans, you know, go after him a little bit. Yeah. So, un- unfortunately, I think it's just a, just a uh, pony, dog and pony show. Uh, and I, I called in Hannity show yesterday. And actually talked to him because I was pissed at him for he's you know for the last few weeks he's been giving um, all these possible questions that the Republicans should should pose to him and I was like dude you, you, you're giving them time to like prep for every <laughs> single possible question that could yeah. ever come his way and so when he gets up there he's there gonna be like oh I know how to answer this oh I know how to answer this yeah <laughs> I'm gonna say don't do don't give, don't give me any more ammunition Why do you, than they need. Yeah, huh? It's like go behind the scenes, talk to the you know senators on their own, and be like, hey, ask them this question and this question, and then yeah. come on air and be like, I you know I think it's gonna be good, but I'm not gonna tell you. Has anybody yeah. has anybody asked how this whole thing started with the Steele dossier or anything like that? Has anybody asked how how this whole investigation got under glass or under the magnifying glass or whatever? Um. You know, I mean, I, th- I mean, because it was rigged, because this is a phony thing, they, they brought it out. I mean, they knew about this. They said this is the, you know, the insurance policy. If if Trump got elected, was okay. We're gonna we we're gonna make up this whole thing. We know he had, you know, vague ties to Russia because he went out there one time. And I mean, there was no tie. And but they were like, now we have to concoct a story around it. And and they used they used all their intel mm-hmm. and all their people inside. Um, to come up with this thing, thinking they would would nail him, and, and it, I think it backfired. I mean, I don't think the Republicans are really going to nail Mueller to the wall here because, like I said, he's just the face of it, and he can just hide behind, you know, it's in the report, and I can't talk about anything else. And unfortunately, because I mean, it's all made up. I mean, this is one big hoax mm-hmm. um, to try to get rid of, try to stop a person becoming president, and once he did, to try to get him out of the office. And yeah. it's, it's a shame. I mean, it's where it's where the deep state and all this intel, you know, um, can go in the future. And we got to be careful about that. You know, all this stuff that came post 9-11 uh, can come back to bite all of us in the rear, uh, not just so-called Al Qaeda. Yeah. All right. Hey, thanks, Kevin. All right. Hey, you guys. You going to be there Friday night? I am going to make do my best. I have a party that night, too, but I, I, I'll hopefully stop by. <laughs> well, let me let me explain something to you, Kevin. <laughs> there's there's a party, and then there's an evening with Tom and Shane. 
Now, that's right. I, I mean, that's know. like that. That's like that's like saying there's a there's a poker game and then there's Las <laughs> Vegas. You know. <laughs> so it's, it's thirty. Is it I would suggest you bring the party to our party. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. These are a bunch of hockey players. I don't know if you. Whoa. Want to that. Oh, that's even better. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Sounds Canadian. good. I love hockey. <laughs> bring them on in. Hey, thanks, right. Kevin. All right, All right. take it easy. Thanks. All right, we got to go. <laughs> Thanks, Shane. Say goodbye, Mal. Goodbye, Mayor. I'm happy to talk to you. We'll talk tomorrow. No, maybe I'll call you from the road. Be yeah. happy, be safe. All right, man. See you later. All right, have a safe trip, Shane. Uh, Shane will be here uh, with us Friday night. Uh, we're going to be at the Grand Tree at 6 o'clock, and so be there. Also, I've got uh, two adult tickets to the uh, Sweet Pea. Two bracelets to the Sweet Pea, so if you want those, 522-TALK.